Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. This is Hippie Tesla with Mutation, and we're continuing our adventures in the world of Resident Evil. One through how many ever there are. I think it's our world. Just go with it. Hello, Hello everybody, and welcome. Alrighty. It is time to dive in. Let's try. Uh, let's try something first. I want to see. Uh, speak with your normal voice, because I I just set up something new, guys. I can hear the game finally in my headset. Didn't get the time to test it, so we'll see how this goes. Hello, hello. Testing, testing. Oh yeah, that's not where I can do that now. Hippie, can you hear me? Yeah, I can actually. I don't know how it's gonna be when we start shooting. It's probably gonna be Joseph. I can't hear you. <laughs> but you know, my indoor voice, huh? Awesome. So we're gonna like 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 the title suggests. We're gonna start with the files that I promised we'll read back two episodes ago. We read like the first sixty pages of them, which is two games worth of files. We're gonna continue now. There's only twelve files, was it, Joe? Thirteen. Thirteen. Thir I see twelve, but okay, sure. From from number three, while I clean my glasses oh, no, and it's pretend 12. I'm sorry. here. Sorry, I thought it said thirteen. <laughs> <You're> right, <laughs> it's twelve. No worries. Uh -oh. Zdravo, zdravo, Maiko. Here we go. Ready? Ready, spaghetti. All right. Take it away, sir. Okay. Actually, I need to figure out where that music is coming from. <laughs> is that the files music? Does it have its own music? Do you hear? See. Well, it's not coming from me, I think. No. Yeah, I hear some little jingle here. Let me see. There's yeah, there the back go. it has a background there we go. tune, yeah. Yeah, it does, yeah, that's kinda of distracting. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn that down while I read for a second here. Alright. Is you say that what Magini? Is that how you say yeah. that? Alright. Alright, let's dive in, shall we? Listed below is what is currently known regarding the Las Plagas parasite. The only recently discovered the parasite known as Las Plagas was sealed away under the family castle of Castellan Ramon Salazar for many generations. The parasite attaches itself to a human host and is assimilated by the central nervous system. Whenever I hear the word assimilated, it reminds me of the movie The Thing, if you haven't seen it. Of what? You ever see that movie The Thing? The Thing, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, whenever I hear that word assimilated. <laughs> uh, let's see. Infected humans lose all rational thinking faculties and are wholly subject to control by another type of plaga known as a control plaga, usually another infected human. Hosts may lack rational thought function, but they still retain human level intelligence, such as the ability to understand and communicate with each other. They can also use tools and are surprisingly crafty when working in groups against an enemy. Leon S. Kennedy documented his encounter with these infected humans in the Kennedy Report. In his report, they were referred to as Ganados. The presence of Las Plagas in this mission has been confirmed. It is currently unknown how the parasites discovered in Europe came to be present in Africa. A known bioweapons smuggler, Ricardo Irving, is wanted for questioning regarding this matter. This information was obtained by the BSAA's Alpha Team at great personal risk to themselves. Their report indicated that a Las Plagas sample was extracted from Europe and has undergone both biological and genetic modification, creating a more effective and potentially dangerous biological weapon. This modified Las Plagas has been classified by researchers as a Type 2. The presence of the Type 2 Plagas has been confirmed to be present in Africa by various intel reports. Type 2's initial infection characteristics vary from the original parasite's infection. <clears throat> the Las Plagas discovered in Europe were injected into humans during the egg phase. They would then reach maturity within the host's body, at which point they would assume control of the host's central nervous system. With type 2, infection occurs from a mature parasite. This requires it to enter the host orally, usually by being forced directly into the potential host's mouth. The observed result of this type of infection method is one of extreme muscular convulsions and uncontrollable body spasms. 
also of note, whereas the original Las Plagas took anywhere from a few hours to a few days to assimilate a host, Type 2 requires almost zero aturation time. From this point alone, Type 2 is a much more efficient weapon. Infections of this type have already been witnessed by BSAA operatives currently stationed in the area. Type 2 takes over the central nervous system of infected humans and incapacitates normal rational thought faculties. The infected hosts become willing subjects to the ones that control them. However, to maximize their effectiveness as a weapon, the persons who command them do not need to possess control plaga to do so. According to Intel reports, Type 2 hosts are apparently known as Magini to weapons dealers. This word comes from the local language meaning evil spirit. Because the code name Type 2 exists, oh, it's the presumed... Page. I did? Yeah. Where? To page 10. Oh shit. <laughs> Backing up. Like hosts retain <laughs> hosts retain their intelligence and the abilities of the host are dependent on the abilities inherent in the human before infection. This is the same as with the original version of the Las Plagas Parasite. It has been speculated that to raise their proliferation of the weapon, the parasite has been altered so that its hosts will actively infect others in order to increase their numbers. According to Intel reports, Type 2 hosts are apparently known as Magini to weapons dealers. This word comes from the local language meaning evil spirit. Because the codename Type 2 exists, it is presumed that there are subsequent numbered types, example being Type 3 and Type 4. No confirmation of this, however, has been acquired at this time. Very informative. That's disgusting the way they describe it, but you know, we see yeah, that yeah. in the game. <laughs> it's pretty gross. Yeah. Alright, Chris Redfield time. Let's do it. Uh, you're still reading, I'm still cleaning my glasses. Oh, that's right. Good luck all right. with all the 27 pages. <laughs> <laughs> Joy. All right. Chris Redfield. Listed within this file is a general background information overview of BSA agent Chris Redfield, as pieced together from various sources. The information listed here is neither complete nor should it be used as a psychological analysis of the subject. Chris Redfield began his military career in the United States Air Force, possessing a service record with both commendations and disciplinary actions, commanding officers have described Chris as uncompromising, possessing unwavering dedication and having a high level of adaptability. It was these traits that saw Chris earn his wings, but also these same traits that brought him into direct conflict with superiors. Unable to settle these differences, Chris retired from the United States Air Force. After retirement, Chris was scouted by Raccoon City Special Forces, STARS, because of his superior firearm and hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, along with his qualifications as both fixed-winged aircraft and helicopter pilot. Joining the STARS team, oops, unable to settle these differences, Chris retired from the United States. Oh, wait, did I already read this? Yeah, it happened to me, don't worry, I did the same thing. Yeah, Hello, it's Brown. like very sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Brown's Joining here. the stars. Oh, hey, Bron, welcome to the stream. Joining the stars team, Chris was designated as point man for Alpha Team. As PM, it was his duty to scout and secure positions ahead of the team. His duties required him not only to be a good shooter and fighter, but also be able to use a wide array of weaponry. It was in this area where he excelled, showing the ability to handle anything from small arms to large weapons, and the flexibility to use them as the situation dictated. Chris's performance with STARS was exploring. It appeared that he had finally found his niche, but fate had other plans in mind for Chris. Unbeknownst to him, the next chapter in his story was about to unfold on that fateful night in July 1998. The STARS Bravo team responding to reports of disappearances in the surrounding areas of Raccoon City abruptly went radio silent. Alpha team was sent in to investigate. Shortly after the helicopter touched down, they were attacked by wild ravenous canines known as the B.O.W. Cerberus and were forced to take refuge in a nearby mansion. This mansion was in reality 
the Arclay Research Facility for the pharmaceutical giant Umbrella. It was at this facility that they developed bioweapons and conducted uncounted illegal experiments. Here, Chris and his partner, Jill Valentine, were forced to combat numerous BOWs as part of an active tactical research plan devised by Albert Wesker. Wesker was the commanding officer of STARS and therefore Chris and Jill's superior. Though all his actions were done at the behest of the Umbrella Corporation, Wesker used his rank in STARS to manipulate Chris and Jill. Wesker unleashed several BOWs into the mansion in order to gather data for his own ends. This tragedy in the Arclay Mountains became known as the Mansion Incident and ended with Chris and Jill destroying the creature known as Tyrant, the death of Wesker and the destruction of the laboratory. Having survived the incident at the mansion, Chris attempted to notify the authorities regarding Umbrella's activities, but all his warnings were ignored due to Umbrella's sway. Having exhausted this option, he attempted to notify the U.S. government of the situation. This too, however, proved fruitless. He knew that taking on such a large corporate entity alone would not be easy, and might in fact prove fatal. But in the end, he was left with no other choice. Thus, Chris continued his investigation on his own, without informing his family of his intentions. He soon departed for Europe. Chris wanted to shield his family from any ill effects his investigation might occur, but ironically it brought one of his family members into the fray. When Claire Redfield was unable to get in contact with her brother, she journeyed to Raccoon City to find him. Upon arrival in the city, she found the area awash in the terror brought on by the spread of the T-Virus. In that land of death and confusion, Claire met Leon S. Kennedy and together they were able to fight their way out of the city. After the Raccoon City ordeal, Claire flew to Paris to investigate Umbrella's activities in Europe, but she was captured and sent to Rockford Island. When Chris learned from Leon what had happened to Claire, he made his way to Rockford Island to free her. It was there that Chris was confronted with many harsh facts. Umbrella had a research facility in Antarctica. Alexia Ashford was still alive. There was a new virus called T. Veronica. And most surprisingly of all, Albert Wesker was still alive. The man behind the horror of the mansion incident, Chris's former commanding officer, somehow survived the destruction of the mansion. Once again, Chris was unwittingly thrust into one of Wesker's schemes, and he was forced to face the man whose destiny appeared to be intertwined with his own. Chris was easily overpowered by Wesker's inhuman strength, but luck was on Chris's side that day. In the ensuing conflagration that consumed the island, Chris and Wesker's conflict was put on hold for the time being. With his resolve strengthened, Chris determined that no matter at what personal cost to himself, Umbrella would fall. Fast forward to 2003, Chris is in the skies over Russian. His partner, Joe Valentine, by his side. Is over Russian? Yeah, I'll just go with it. So many <laughs> mistakes in these files. <laughs> okay. At this point, Umbrella was in dire straits. In the wake of the destruction of Raccoon City, the company became embattled in litigation, and their stock price plummeted. It was only a matter of time before Umbrella collapsed. It was during this time that Chris learned of Umbrella's plans to develop a new type of BOW. Chris and Jill had obtained information and were headed to the Caucasus Laboratory where the TALOS plan was being conducted in secret. They were to rendezvous with an anti-bioterrorism unit and attack the location. Not long after this incident, the once seemingly untouchable Umbrella was officially no more. The seed that Umbrella sowed, however, would continue to reap tragedy for the world. BOWs were no longer restricted to areas of conflict, but were now being used in terrorist attacks against innocent civilians. It was at this time that Chris and Jill joined the BSAA, a group dedicated to eliminating those bioweapons. The two of them traversed the world together, partners in the fight to bring bioterrorists to justice. The shadow of Umbrella still loomed large though, as they would soon discover. When Chris and Jill went to question Umbrella's founder, Oswell E. Spencer, about Wesker's whereabouts, they were greeted by the sight of Umbrella's founder lying crumpled on the floor and the blood-stained figure of Wesker standing over him. This would be the third confrontation between Chris and Wesker. 
This time, the confrontation ended in tragedy as Jill, seeing no other option, made the ultimate sacrifice to stop Wesker. With one last effort, she charged Wesker and threw both herself and him over the side of a cliff. The BSAA searched for Jill's body for three months, but no trace of her was ever found. After three months of searching with no success, Jill Valentine was officially declared dead by the BSAA. No one, no one knows what promises Chris made in front of Jill's empty grave, but following her loss, he redoubled his efforts to eradicate all bioorganic weapons, wherever they may be. Initially stationed at BSAA's North American branch, his investigations soon took him around the world. He became involved in so many operations that he soon had more missions to his name than any other BSAA member. During one of his investigations, Chris learned of an upcoming bioweapons deal in Africa in connection with a man named Ricardo Irving. Irving's name has come up quite often of late in association with bioweapons smuggling. After informing the BSAA African branch about Irving, Chris urgently requested permission to participate in the operation to arrest Irving. As for the reasons he wished to participate in this mission, Chris would not comment. Whether he's withholding information or not is unclear. As one of the most respected BSA agents, his presence in this operation greatly increases the chances of success. Thus, his request has been granted. Man, like, does that mean, th did he know? Did he, did he have a hunch? Did he ha have a tip? You know, there's gonna. I don't some, know. There's gonna be it, a Jill. I don't know. It. It. He seemed rather, if not almost completely surprised by Jill's presence. So, maybe not. I think it's just his uh. His dedication to just stopping the smuggling, any any act of bioterrorism, he kind of almost like an obsession, if you will. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Letty. I appreciate the the comment. That great narration. Thank you. Just one second before we continue. I want to see. Can you adjust volume, headset volume, without being in the party and on Xbox? Because my party is on the PC, but uh, the game is louder than you, basically. I want to fix that before we get into action. Because once we start shooting and exploding, it's going to be you know, hard to do that. Are you talking about how to adjust the, the volume for the game? Yeah, well, f on the Xbox, is there a way to do it on Xbox dashboard rather than in-game, you know? Oh, um, that is a great question. I think so. If you go to the audio and music, um, um, there should be a way to modify, I think, the, the volume, but I'm not sure. No, I'm in vol volume and audio output, and it, I think it only shows when you, when I'm in the party, so I'm going to do it in the uh, game. Okay. So just so I can hear you. I need to hear you better than the game. What I hear now is, in the, is independent of what's in the stream, basically, so. Right. Let's do BGM volume halfway, SFX halfway. Let's hear that. Well, if I need to, I'll lower it even more. No, not play game. Uh, files, right? <laughs> library. Yeah, library has its own music. Okay, say something. Yeah, that's what now. I was saying. Yeah, I was like, where's that jingle coming from? So I had to turn it off. Yeah, there you go. So, just a sec. I mean, it's best to do it in game when we're fighting and the screaming monsters. For now, I'll put this to 80, I think, would be good. Maybe a little loud, huh? Let's say 70. All right, I think this will be it. Say something. Imagine testing, we're testing. getting we're getting chainsawed by one of those like chainsaw magini. Oh here. god, he's killing me. <laughs> I think that's okay. If need be, I'll I'll lower it. All right. Thirty-six pages, sixteen pages, eleven pages. Jesus Christ! Ten pages, twelve pages, twenty-six pages, eight pages. 24 pages. Holy oh shit. All right, God. I'll take why the next Sheva's, one. Why is Sheva's file longer <laughs> than Chris's? Let's hope that it's like there's a lot of line breaks. <laughs> oh, All right, I'll luck. take I'll take Sheva. Right. Here we go. 
Listed within this file is a general background information overview of BSAA agent Sheva Alomar, as pieced together from various sources. The information listed here is neither complete nor should it be used as a psychological analysis of the subject. Sheva Alomar was born into an impoverished family situation in a small factory town situated in Africa. This particular town being home to Umbrella Plant 57. 57? What happened to the first 56? <laughs> As with most factory towns, the plant was the lifeblood of the town, bringing in much needed revenue and steady employment for its populace. Almost 80% of the town's adult population was employed at the factory and some facility, including Sheva's parents. While the pay was low by most nation standards, it provided a steady income for the townspeople and a happy childhood for Sheva. Man, this kind of speaks to me. <laughs> <laughs> this happiness was short-lived, however. While only eight years old, Sheva's peaceful life was brought to an abrupt end by the sound of sirens erupting from the factory. As the sirens pierced the air, an ominous plume of black smoke poured out of the factory. Even as a child, Sheva knew something was terribly wrong. With dread in her heart, she ran toward the factory. Arriving at the factory, she soon discovered the entrance blocked. In place of the kind old man who used to stand guard at the entrance, Strange adults in protective suits were everywhere, their faces hidden by masks. Sheva could not understand what was happening. I realized years later that they were wearing anti-biohazard protective gear. They were part of Umbrella's special forces. She may, she may have not understood the muffled voices emanating from beneath those masks at the time, but the assault rifles they leveled at her more than made their intentions understood. The country was not a very stable place to begin with, and near her town resided members of a large anti-government guerrilla army. Although only a child, Sheva knew all too well the violence that often accompanied those with guns. The adults in the village that remained were promptly executed by these gunmen. Sheva was spared this same fate thanks to the vigilance of a neighbor who was able to get her back to her parents' home unnoticed. Thus began the longest night of Sheva's life. Crippled by fear, she could only wait and pray for her parents' return. The night passed and a new day dawned, but still they did not return. As night on another day fell, she sensed a presence outside her home. Unable to contain her relief and joy, she ran to the door to greet her parents. As she swung the door open, crying aloud with joy, she was soon met with disappointment and confusion. For at the door were not her parents rushing to embrace her, but her uncle, with a look of shock and horror painted upon his face. His words crushed any hope she had left. Your parents are dead. There was an accident at the factory. Taking anything of value left in the house, her uncle then took Sheva to live with his family taking her away from the only home she had ever known. Her life with her uncle would be brief. Not only was her uncle's family extremely poor, but he also had seven children of his own to care for. Sheesh. Even though Sheva was a blood relative, she probably never would have come... He probably never... He probably never would have come for her if he hadn't thought he would receive financial compensation from the factory. Oh, I remember this just getting darker and darker. <laughs> that compensation never came. Umbrella never gave out any payments. And soon her aunt and uncle were unable to feed her. Life was hell for Sheva. Not only was she on the verge of starvation, she yearned to be with her parents again. In her grief, she became fixated on the notion that they were still alive. As the days passed, this belief grew so strong to the point where she could think of nothing else. She knew she had to find them. So one night, as the moon bathed, in the, bathed the savanna in silver, Sheva ran away from her uncle's house and headed back to her hometown and the life that was stolen from her. She thought of her parents... She thought... No, the thought of her parents drove her on. But the expansive savanna is a harsh environment for one so young and small. During her second night, she began to feel the effects of malnutrition. Unable to find food, Sheva soon collapsed. 
A night in the savanna is not a quiet affair. The sounds of animals plodding along, beasts howling at the moon, insects chirping and buzzing about, and the dry wind soughing, soughing through the grass. Sheva considered them all with wonder. She had grown up in a town and was un unaccustomed to her new surroundings. Through the cacophony of strange noises, Sheva picked up a sound that was quite familiar to her. She heard a low rumbling of an engine and the sound of tires crackling over the dirt. A truck pulled up next to Sheva, and a stranger got out of the passenger side and spoke to her. If she replied to him or not, she couldn't recall, but the man picked her up and placed her in the bed of the truck. The man that found Sheva was an anti-government guerrilla fighter. He provided her with food, shelter, and a place to call home. Unfortunately for Sheva, this good turn was accompanied by some bad news. She was told that the incident at the Umbrella factory was not an accident, that the factory manufactured bioweapons and Umbrella was carrying out the final test on one of its newest weapons at the dilapidated factory. The regular employees who worked there were unaware, unaware of what Umbrella was actually creating and they paid for it with their lives, including Sheva's mother and father. After concluding the test, Umbrella took the measures to conceal the entire affair. With the assistance of the government's army, they destroyed the factory along with the entire town, effectively wiping the town Sheva had called home off the map. At this news, Sheva was filled with rage. She hated Umbrella and blamed them for her parents' deaths and she hated the government for just rolling over at Umbrella's behest. It was at this moment she decided to join the guerrillas in their fight against the government. Sheva started out by doing laundry, cooking meals, and taking care of, the, of other chores. After only a few years with the guerrillas, she was given her first gun. Only a few? You would expect that to happen within days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She doesn't like to talk about her time with the guerrillas. Perhaps the memories are too painful, or maybe she's too ashamed of what she did there. One of her main duties with the guerrillas was to go into town and purchase supplies for the group. For seven long years, Sheva stayed with the guerrillas. By this time, she was a teenager and had spent most of her known life with the guerrillas. Okay, if you say guerrillas one more time in this text, I'm gonna punch someone. <laughs> Perhaps due to her age, when she went into town, the townspeople never suspected her of being a guerrilla fighter. It could be for this very reason that she was the one they sent. It was one of these occasions, it was on one of these occasions while she was in town that a man approached her. He looked like a local but spoke with a strange foreign accent. Handing her a piece of paper and speaking in a hurried voice, he stated, Read this. If you believe what it says, come to the church in the back alley in two hours. After speaking these words, he disappeared into the crowd as quickly as he appeared. Sheva turned the paper over in her hand, and her eyes were drawn to one word. Umbrella. I mean, from this I can conclude the guy was just sending umbrellas and she just went into a psycho rage. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, but yeah. <laughs> It was the same pharmaceutical company whose selfish aims took her parents from her. If that incident had never happened, perhaps her life would have been different. The message on the paper said that the guerrillas were planning on using bioweapons to conduct a large-scale terrorist attack that would overthrow the government. Umbrella was going to make a deal with the guerrillas to provide them with the bioweapons. The man wanted Sheva's help in stopping the deal from going through. At first, Sheva thought it was a government trap, but deep down she knew the note spoke the truth. When asked how she knew, she had this to say. My country was strongly influenced by France, and many government officials spoke in a French patois. But this man was different. I couldn't place his accent at the time, but somehow I knew I could trust him. Sheva followed her instincts. She went to the church and met two men there. One of them had given her the note earlier. The other wore a suit with no tie and said that he was from the US government. What the man in the suit wanted seemed straightforward enough. 
the apprehension of the representative from Umbrella. From what he said, this particular person held the key to causing an irreparable blow to Umbrella. But in order to arrest him, they needed Sheva's help. As long as they got their man, they wouldn't do anything to her or her fellow guerrillas. <clears throat> Even if they did not succeed in arresting the man in question, they promised not to turn her or turn her or her companions over to the authorities. The man in the suit's offer seemed credible, but could she betray those who had been like a family to her? The man seemed to understand Sheva's apprehension, so he asked her one simple question. Don't you want to see Umbrella punished for what they've done? Sheva quickly nodded her head. That's why we selected you. But if you want to help us fight Umbrella, then you are going to have to leave your so-called friends. And then what? What's in it for me? Look around. You know these guerrillas are you are with aren't doing this for some greater good. They'll do anything to topple the government, including things you know are wrong. Help us, and you can finally do some good for the people of your country. And what, what makes you think a 15-year-old girl can help? Holy shit! <laughs> you think it's bad here? Damn! Live where Sheva lives, in a made-up country, but still, it's based on reality. Jesus Christ, 15 years. I imagine by this time she was 25, but you know, it's a Japanese game. She's probably like 17 in the game. <laughs> right. <laughs> Someday you learn that age matters very little. A person's life is not defined by age, but by the choices they make. You have the chance to fight for something here that goes beyond just you. Something that affects the entire world. Can you really walk away when so much is at stake? Sheva would never forget these words. Three days later, the special forces team arrived at the location where the deal was taking place. Sheva had left the door to the building unlocked and she wore a wire so the team on standby could hear what was taking place. The operation was a success. The target from Umbrella was quickly apprehended and taken away. Sheva and the guerrillas were taken to the American consulate, there to be released two days later with no charges pressed, <clears throat> just as promised. Recognizing Sheva's abilities, or perhaps moved by pity, the man in the suit offered Sheva the chance to start life anew in America. With nothing left in Africa for her, Sheva decided to take him up on his offer. Yet she somehow has a British accent in the game, you notice that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Refreshing throat. Almost there. This is like poker rap. <laughs> You're almost there. <laughs> oh, Swayze. Hello. Thank you for the sub, Swayze. How you doing, brother? What's cooking today? Thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate it. Is it working? Yeah, it's working now. Check out Classic Swayze, currently doing a run of Diablo 4 like a pro. Good, good. It's going great, man. We're reading files. We're currently lost in files, and later we're going to be lost in nightmares. <laughs> how, are you, how are you with RE5, Swayze? <laughs> uh, rest, rest well, my friend. Days off are meant to be for that. Unless you're like me and you topple the house cleaning. Do, do not do that. <laughs> Shortly after arriving in America, Sheva's high intelligence and drive quickly became apparent. She surpassed any and all expectations, even learning English to a native level in a mere six months. Within two years of arriving in the US, she had enrolled at a university. After graduating with high honors from her university, her legal guardian, the man in the suit, suggested that she join the newly formed BSAA to help others as she had been helped. Umbrella had already been dismantled many years prior, but Sheva had not let go of her hatred toward them all and others like them. After completing basic training, she was assigned to the unit led by Josh Stone. There she trained with his unit for eight months, learning everything she would need to know to survive in the field. After the completion of her training, she was handpicked to become a BSAA agent. 
She is currently involved in operations throughout the world. Woo! That was a long one. Woo! Yes, yeah, Swayze, I don't blame you. It's fun with a friend, but it's not horror. Personally, not a fan of post-outbreak Resident Evil, say Ferrari 7. And uh, what was the other one? Revelations 2, I guess, is okay. But like all of these are... It's like making a new Tetris and naming it Tekken 9, you know. That's that's what it feels <laughs> like for me, at least. But it, yeah, like I said, it's very fun to play with a friend and even read files with a friend. So mutation, my friend, it's just 16 pages. You can do this. <laughs> I can do it. All right, we're on to file number six, Ricardo Irving. According to official records, Ricardo Irving is the overseer of the oil refinery owned by Tricell Africa Division's Resource Development Department. Good lord. <laughs> Crude and arrogant. <laughs> yeah. Crude and arrogant, he possesses an insatiable desire for the accumulation of wealth. It is these traits, along with his unique resourcefulness, that have most likely made him Tricell's ideal agent in dealings with selling BOWs to black market individuals. The money gained from these dealings is then <clears throat> invested by Tricell Africa back into their bioweapons research and development. The demonstration of those weapons for clients act as operational tests. Given the degree of Irving's involvement, it is believed that he is one of only a handful of people that know the full extent of Tricell's bioweapons business. Irving's activities and their connection to Tricell, however, have been carefully kept under wraps. Adding to the misdirection is the fact that he is officially employed with the Resource Development Division and not the Pharmaceutical Division that sponsors the BSAA. Tricell is a conglomerate compromised of shipping, natural resources development, and pharmaceuticals. Each division runs on its own capital and, as such, could all be considered separate entities under one parent company. Also of note are the divisions that exist between each of Tricell's branch offices. When the BSAA learned of Irving's latest deal, they viewed it as a illicit activity conducted on his own and without support from Tricell. BSAA's mission, therefore, was not to fight biological weapons, but to apprehend a smuggler involved in an illicit deal. Irving was able to exploit that misconception to the fullest. Irving was informed of the BSAA's mission and changed the location of the deal to a mine outside of the Kajuju Anonymous Zone, KAZ, when a BSAA team arrived at what they thought was the deal's location inside the KAZ, they walked into a trap. Before the team even arrived, the improved version of Las Plagas was released upon the populace of the town, transforming most of them into Majini. This intel was acquired by Alpha Team, and later confirmed by the data recovered by the backup team, Chris Redfield and Sheva Alamar, prior to Irving's deal. It appears that a sample of the Uroboro virus was also released upon Alpha Team's arrival and was responsible for the termi termination of Dan DeChant's team. Irving did not take into account that the Uroboros would be engaged and defeated by Agents Redfield and Alamar, nor that a hard disk and its data would be seized. The data obtained from the hard disk allowed the two agents to proceed to the actual location of Irving's transaction, the mine. When confronted with the reality that his plan had failed, Irving was forced to take the following actions. First, he contacted his partners in the transaction and requested to delay the deal, after which point he went to the mine to retrieve any documents and materials relevant to the transaction. It was at this point that Redfield and Olimar found him. However, it was obvious that he had a backup plan for just such a contingency. Irving escaped thanks to the help of a hooded figure he had on standby. The two agents were left to deal with... Popo Kam Karimu? Nice. I didn't even know that's what the name was. <laughs> Popo Karimu, a yeah. <laughs> bat, a bat-based BOW that was originally intended to be used in the transaction. It is thought that Irving released this BOW on the agents in retaliation for disrupting the transaction and not to aid in his escape. It was becoming apparent by this point that Irving's mental stability was in question. Whether his irrational behavior was brought on by the interference of the agents or if the increased stress only brought out his true tendencies is unknown. Irving's situation, however, would digress even further. 
After escaping from the mine, he was soon discovered by Captain Josh Stone's Delta team inside the KAZ. In order to escape, Irving unleashed Ndizu? Is that how you say that? Ndesu. Ndesu. Confirmed yeah. to be based on the El Gigante BOW used in Europe. The frustration of losing two large, valuable BOWs in such short succession must have been keenly felt by the Equivarius Irving. After reaching the conclusion that there was nothing more he could do, Irving plotted to escape with his accumulated wealth, but he was soon overtaken by the hooded figure, who provided him a vial containing Los Plagas. This was to be his punishment for failure. He was to administer this on himself in order to fight the two agents. This vial contained a Las Plagas variant known as Control Plaga. According to BSA Intel, the use of the Control Plaga has been documented by Leon S. Kennedy in Europe. The Control Plaga differs from the common form in that it does not take over a host's rational thought process. Another difference being that it causes extreme transformations to the host. As such, control plaga hosts must resign themselves to never being able to live as a normal human again. In a last-ditch effort, Irving detonated the oil refinery, but unfortunately for him, the refinery was virtually dry at the time, thus limiting the size of the explosion. His hope was that he could destroy all incriminating evidence and kill Agents Redfield and Olimar so he would not have to resort to using the control plaga. Irving was left with no choice but to administer the injection to himself, at which point he underwent an immense and rapid transformation. But even the power he gained from that transformation did not avail him. He met his end at the hands of the two agents. Well, more like at the hands of our uh, chain guns, but you know. That's right. <laughs> we fired so many bullets at him that it was uh, inhuman. <laughs> Here we go, one fourth. Now lower this. I'm still like, while we're reading and doing this shit, I'm still uh, adjusting the audio. Slowly but surely, you know. Surely, slowly but surely. Thank yeah. you, Letty, for the the food. I appreciate it. Nice little treat for Pando. <laughs> Alright, files. That was Ricardo. Alright, halfway through, man. Here we go. And the Endipire tribe. The Endipire tribe reside in unique wooden structures in the wetlands. Their advanced architectural techniques are used throughout the world to repair and maintain many damaged ancient ruins. This is how the world at large knows of the Endipire. But the Endipire possesses a secret that they do not wish to share with the rest of the world. That the ancient ruins of the Endipire kingdom reside beneath their land. In ancient times, the surrounding lands were all under the control of the sovereign Ndipaya kingdom, and the city of ruins was the seat of that monarch. Special attention should be given to the way the sovereign was chosen. While the Ndipaya did, did have a monarchy, the king was not decided by birthright, but by the abilities and qualities he displayed during a certain required ceremony. This ceremony employed a special plant that grew in the sun garden residing in the deepest area of the royal city. This plant was known as the Stairway of the Sun, or to the Sun, Stairway to the Sun, not of the Sun. The Stairway to the Sun was an extremely poisonous plant and its effects were fatal if consumed. Though some individuals possessed, though some individuals possessed a natural resistance to the poison, the, the Endipaya people believed that a man who could prevail against the poison was destined to become king. Vestiges of this ceremony are still carried out once a year by the Ndipaya for the continual peace of their ancestors' spirits. Even with a natural resistance, finding an individual that could survive ingestion of the powerful poison was a rarity. It is said by the Ndipaya people that one such man reigned as king for hundreds of years. Whether this legend has any validity to it cannot be ascertained at present. What is known is that this once flourishing kingdom fell into decline and was eventually abandoned by the Ndipaya people. It is not known what made the Ndipaya abandon their city for, for the wetlands. Any information regarding these matters come from oral traditions and hearsay, which obviously calls into question the validity of the information. What is known, though, is that after leaving the city, 
The Indipaya viewed it as sacred ground and vowed to keep its existence hidden from outsiders. All Indipaya males between the ages of 13 and 25 are required to spend two years in the city to guard and protect it. It is through their continued vigilance that this great city's existence has been kept undiscovered by the outside world. There was, however, one instance of outsiders discovering the secret city. In the 1960s, a corporation went into the sacred city to find the plant used in their ceremonies and take it by force. The Indipaya fiercely resisted this incursion into their land. In times of peace, the Indipaya are builders of great renown, but when the need for war arises, they can become stout warriors. This adaptab adaptability is the essence of the Indipaya. Their physical prowess in battle was their greatest weapon, and they used it to fight bravely. But they were overwhelmed by the enemy's technological advan advantages. During this time, many of the Indipaya youths consumed the plant in an effort to fight off the invader. Oh my god, they poisoned themselves to death. Man, this game has... The horror is in the files. It's not in the game. It's not in the action. It's in the fucking files. <laughs> in the end, the Indipaya were forced to cede the area of the Sun Garden and beyond to the corporation's control. But the Indipaya have not yet given up hope of one day reclaiming their sacred land and returning to its former glory. That's just grim. The whole thing. It's fucked up, isn't it? <laughs> it's terrible. Oof. Your turn. Alrighty. We are now on to file number eight. U8. U8 is name of the B.O.W. born from a weapons development project involving Las Plagas. The creature is compromised or comprised of the refined DNA of multiple organisms, specifically the DNA of shelled organisms. The alterations to this aspect of the creature is reflected in its dark coloring. The Kerospace is an unparalleled durability and was once shown to be resistant to a direct hit from RPGs and tests. This gigantic creature has another special feature in its design. U8 is some tens of meters tall and its pincer legs are over 3 meters in length, which it uses as a weapon in close combat. These pincer attacks are not especially quick, but they are powerful enough to pierce the armor of a tank. Cool. Flying BOWs reside in the part of U8's abdomen, originally intended for the maturation of eggs and an unaltered specimen. These flying BOWs are not larval U8s, but completely different creatures entirely. In close quarter, one-on-one -on -one fight, U8 is an overwhelmingly powerful adversary. But when it has to combat more than one opponent, its large size becomes somewhat of a liability. Its considerable bulk also makes it vulnerable to long-range attacks. To compensate for this weakness, it uses the flying BOWs in much the same way an aircraft carrier uses jet fighters. Some would consider U8 as impeccable fighting machine, but it does have its flaws. u 8 size can be a detriment because it requires massive amounts of sustenance to maintain functionality. As such, U8 is not suitable for long-term assignments. According to Tricell's business information, U8 is most effective as security for a facility or when used in attacks of limited time. Before it can be used in an offensive attack, consideration must be given to the means of transporting U8 to the des destination. Also, U8 is designed to reach a large size very rapidly, and this breeds imperfections in its carob space. These imperfections are limited to a certain area, but a direct attack on this area will severely damage U8. Even with these flaws, U8's functionality, combat effectiveness, and relative ease to control have made it's popular in the bioweapons market. Records indicate that Ricardo Irving has sold a multitude of both the original U8 and the upgraded version, U8 Prime, which has a multi-layered care space for extra defense along with shell covering formerly exposed areas. There were plans at one point to design a lighter, faster U8 that could maintain functionality for lar longer periods of time, but this would result in significant downgrade in its defensive capabilities. This plan appears to have been scrapped. 
Briss Redfield and Sheva Olimar have reported imperfections in the UA that they face, so it's suspected that it was one of the original models. Note that the U in U8 does not stand for Uroboros, but for Ultimate. The boss from RE4 that I totally forgot about, it was U something too, wasn't it? Oh uh, yeah, I think it was designated as U. U3 or something like that? It was U3, yeah. Yeah, so this is like even even more upgraded, huh? Yeah, this is uh, line number eight. Are they like where 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 did we fight that? It sounds familiar, but I can't remember. Where did we fight the U eight? The U eight? Yeah. Uh, let me think. That one was. Um... Oh, was it the, in the factory remember. the thing that spins where we thought we'd find Jill but we didn't? I don't remember where the hell we fought that thing. Oh. Yeah, I remember we fought it when, uh, yeah, in when they were looking for her in the pod, and it's that that elevator thing that keeps that keeps descending. Yeah, that's or going I mean. up. I can't remember like, what it was. Yeah, it's on it that. Was doing both, that, I think, at some point. <laughs> yeah, the circular platform. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I remember very little of it, even though we did it recently. Still, it doesn't. It doesn't feel. It's. It doesn't feel memorable. It just. I was just trying to th while we were reading. I was thinking about it. And uh, try and imagine the thing. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah. It's like, uh, it was really pretty big. Obviously, it was hanging on to the walls. Ah, and then, yeah, it has like the... The Chaturga, the, the giant crab. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it was yeah. like this giant, you know, like spider-looking thing. But you have to shoot it in its mouth. It's the only exposed area. Yeah. Aside from, I think it's... But to like kind of incapacitate it, you shoot the, the legs... And then it'll open up its mouth. That's right, but you had something sexy and strong and we killed it and again <laughs> in record time. Yeah. It really made this story run a story run and not the battle run. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It was, but, we were well prepared. <laughs> well, you were prepared. I was just like deaf and blind swatting around with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Gavin. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Good day to you. Good morning. Good noon, I guess. Afternoon. It's afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to the file reading. We're almost done with the files. We'll actually play some game today, but, you know, we've got to do what we got to do. And we're at 9 out of 12. Wow, it really flies when we're both doing it. Joseph! That's Gavin saying Joseph! hi. Joseph! <laughs> uh, hey, Gavin, how's it going? How's the, how's the volume of the game, of the background music, guys, now? Because I, as you've probably seen, while we were reading files, I was dicking around with the audio. Now I can hear the game. I can hear Joseph a lot louder than the game. And in the stream, it should still be leveled good, so... Like, the Xbox sounds will be loud. But the game itself shouldn't be loud. According to my sound meters. But like, let's put it to <laughs> test. Playing as Nicolas Cage in Dead by Daylight. I heard about that. Yeah, I heard about that. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm curious. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have DVD installed. Sasha's hard drive died, so she hadn't played in a month. Poor thing. We gotta fix that. But uh, you know, I didn't have the chance to see it anywhere. Maybe on someone's stream. I don't know. But I'm really curious to see what that's like. I think they did it on purpose for people who are not fans of uh, of DVD. They'll be like, oh, but I am a fan of Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Enjoy your game, buddy. And for me, I'm going to read this file. One, two for me, and two for you. All right, this is good. Tricel. Tricel is a conglomerate organization comprised of shipping, natural resources development, and pharmaceuticals divisions. Tricel's history dates back to the period known as the Age of Exploration. The forebearer to Tricel was Travis Trading, a company owned by the wealthy European merchant Thomas Travis. That's right! This is the game where I was expecting this in RE4, Joseph. But uh, Thomas Travis, remember the story behind him, the, the backstabbing story? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's in this game. That's why I, I keep saying the files are the best part of this game for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Thomas. This company profited greatly from expansive trading with the Orient and laid the groundwork for what would become Tricel's shipping division. 
Travis trading entered the 19th century as a profitable trading venture. In the 1800s, Henry Travis, the youngest of seven siblings, invested much of his own fortune into the exploration of Africa. During this period, the exploits of explorers like David Livingstone were creating quite a stir in the newspapers of the day. Henry's expedition was inspired by these accounts, and his decision was to have a great impact on Travis Trading's future. Henry made five expeditions to the African continent in order to explore all of its regions. The extensive funds of the Travis family allowed him to continue his research into Africa even through times when results were not forthcoming. After his fifth and final expedition in Africa, Henry Travis returned to his home country a full 34 years after he had first left it. Henry compiled the records of his expeditions into an impressive 72 volume set entitled Survey of Natural History. These books covered everything from animals, plants, insects, minerals, and topography to the native inhabitants and their cultures, histories, and traditions. These books also contained extensive records dealing the fo de dealing, <laughs> detailing the folklore of various peoples throughout the continent. These tomes were a veritable encyclopedia of the African continent. Henry's surveys was published in its entirety, but his meticulous details were viewed as products of creative license and an overzealous imagination. The books were ultimately discredited by the scientific community. Considered to be a novelty item, only a few copies of the entire series were ever published. The shock of being shunned by the scientific community sent Henry into a deep state of depression. He passed away only two years after his return from Africa. Holy shit, that's depressing. But it gets worse, guys, believe it or not. Hey, Nikolai, welcome, comrade Nikolai. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing, comrade? What's cooking, Nick? Well, that doesn't rhyme, but just imagine it does. Well, good to see you here, my my South American friend. All the way on the other side of the planet. Well, almost on the other side, but yeah, pretty far away. <laughs> Love that willy eye. It is now believed that the head of Travis Trading at that time, Henry's eldest brother, purposely spread the rumor that Henry's books were nothing more than fiction. The thought being that he did this because he wanted Travis Trading to be the only company that could exploit the information contained within those books. Of particular interest was the topographical information contained in volumes 17 through 24. By the end of the 19th century, Travis Trading had begun to exploit the mineral resources of Africa. All over the continent, the company was mining for precious metals and discovering slash developing oil and natural gas fields. Meanwhile, the company's profits continued to soar. These operations formed the basis of Tricell's Natural Resources Development Division. Travis Trading built a firm foothold in Africa, and beginning in the mid-20th century, they had begun to actively collect samples of plants, animals, and insects. Henry's books were instrumental in guiding these endeavors. The collected specimens were used in pharmaceutical research, and before long that research brought commercial success and the subsequent, subsequent founding of Tricell's pharmaceutical division. Travis Trading was the basis for the shipping division. The Natural Resources Development Division was born from the information contained in Henry's journals. The specimens obtained from the African fauna were used to create the Independent Pharmaceuticals Division. By the 1960s, these three divisions of Travis Trading were firmly established and they formed a conglomerate under the name Tricell. The Travis family, however, were not the only ones privy to the knowledge of Henry's journals. Here we go. Umbrella's founder, Oswald E. Spencer, was interested in them for the folklore recorded therein. Of particular interest were the accounts of the Indipayas rituals. Spencer hypothesized that the flower used in their rituals held significance, and this ultimately led to the discovery of the progenitor virus. Well, it's kind of abruptly ending it there, but sure. <laughs> Let's not forget to give our boy Brown a shout out. Brown, cool. Yes, brownie. 
We miss you, bro, wherever you may be. Well, tomorrow um, we'll be getting ready for <clears throat> our stream with Braun and hopefully Mark this time. Yeah, I'm really hoping. <laughs> and he's hoping, I'm sure. <laughs> we still haven't decided. I haven't talked to Braun. I'm going to confirm with him. You're good with running Borderlands from this other day, right? Yes. All right, I'll talk to him. If he's up for that, and he should be because he said he's up for that, but I always like to confirm. That would be nice to just start that. If not, we'll you know we'll delay it a week or two. But it would be nice to start and just two, three, how many hours we can stay awake sessions, and you know just take it easy. Absolutely. Nice, man. Joseph is such a such a such such a <laughs> joy to work with. Anything it's like working with an adult. It's rare nowadays, really. <laughs> Which is sad. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Just I want I want it to be said. I appreciate uh, all uh, of this. <laughs> thank you. Well, I appreciate you, and I love being here. Wonderful. Alrighty, now we are on to file number ten. This one is Jill Valentine. Listed within this file is a general background information overview of former Stars agent Jill Valentine, as pieced together from various sources. The information listed here is neither complete, nor should it be used as a psychological analysis of the subject. When a crisis situation arises, few soldiers excel to the level of Jill Valentine. She is proficient in the use of various firearms, is a master at lockpicking, and is skilled in the disposal of explosives. Jill's talents make her an integral part or component of any fighting force. Like Chris Redfield, Jill was a member of the STARS Alpha team. She was also involved in the tragedy at the Arclay Research Facility, also known as the Mansion Incident. During the incident, Jill and Chris operated independently, but together discovered the truth behind the facility. They learned that Barry Burton was not really a traitor, but was being controlled by Albert Wesker, captain of Alpha Team. In addition to Wesker's machinations, they also learned the source of the zombie outbreak was due to the release of the T-Virus, and that Umbrella was more than just an ordinary pharmaceutical company. What Jill learned at the Arclay Research Facility would have profound repercussions on the rest of her life. Following their return from the mansion, Chris and Jill attempted to inform the authorities of Umbrella's activities. For all their good intentions, they were met with no movement towards any official investigation into the company. Fed up with the lack of response, the two took it upon themselves to investigate Umbrella. They concentrated their efforts on Umbrella's main base of operations in Europe. As a STARS member entrusted with protecting Raccoon City, Jill chose to remain in the city, for the time being, and investigate the Umbrella Research Facility, therefore, before rendezvousing with Chris in Europe. This decision led to her involvement in the Raccoon City incident. During her investigation, rodents infected with the T-Virus from the Arclay Research Facility began to spread the virus into the city. The virus quickly spread, infecting majority of the residents. Umbrella, the perpetrators behind this incident, reacted swiftly. Umbrella sent in the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, UBCS, to handle the situation. And they also dispatched the bioweapon Nemesis, T-Type, to take out any surviving STARS members, who Umbrella now considered a threat. Jill attempted to escape from Raccoon City, all the while be hunted by the Nemesis T-Type. During this time, she encountered a member of the UBCS, Carlos Oliveira. Carlos claimed his team was on a rescue mission to save any survivors in Raccoon City. Having no reason to doubt that mission's purpose, he proposed to help Jill escape. Jill, on the other hand, had her doubts. However, the situation had reached critical proportions, and Jill did not have the luxury of time. The U.S. government was planning on containing the spread of the virus by launching a special missile strike at the city called Operation Bacillus terminate. When Jill became infected with the T-Virus as the result of Nemesis T-Type, she despaired of ever being able to get out alive. Fortunately for her, Carlos was there to help. Carlos obtained a cure to the T-Virus infection and gave it to Jill. After her recovery, she worked with Carlos and they successfully escaped from Raccoon City. In 2003, after Operation Talos, Jill and Chris became two of the original 11 founding members of the BSAA, 
and join them in their fight against bioweapons and bioterrorism around the world. Crescential stopped bioweapons in Asia, destroyed bioweapon labs in South America, arrested smugglers in Europe, and patrolled the world in an attempt to stamp out all bioweapons. Throughout their activities, while they may have suspected the long fingers of Umbrella as being involved, they never had any conclusive proof. Those long fingers, however, would turn out to be connected to the hands of Umbrella's founder, Oswell E. Spencer. The pair received intel on Spencer's whereabouts and rushed off to arrest him, only to find their former captain and hated enemy, Albert Wesker. Seeing Spencer's crumpled corpse on the ground, the two changed their plans to arrest Wesker instead. In a two-on-one fight, Chris and Jill should have the advantage, but Wesker's strength and agility were well beyond that of any normal human. For all their training, Jill and Chris were no match for Wesker. As Wesker was about to end Chris's life, Jill made the ultimate sacrifice. Lunging at Wesker, she threw both herself and him out a window and over the side of a cliff. Chris could do nothing as he watched his partner fall to her death. BSAA launched a full-scale search operation, but neither Jill's body nor any of her personal effects were ever recovered. On November 23, 2006, Jill Valentine was officially declared dead, and her name was added to the list of BSAA members who died in the line of duty. But Jill's story did not end there. The fault did not kill Jill nor Wesker. Though badly hurt and unconscious, Jill was saved by Wesker. After giving her the medical treatment she required, he placed her in a cryogenic sleep. Once the Uroboros plan was finalized, Wesker intended to use her as the first test subject. This was Wesker's way of exacting his revenge. Fortunately for Jill, luck was on her side. The apparatus monitoring her vital signs detected some abnormalities. Something was happening inside Jill's body. And Wesker's curiosity was piqued. Further investigation showed that a mutated form of the T-Virus was still inside her. It was a remnant from her infection in Redcoat City. The cure she was given was supposed to have eradicated all traces of the virus, but instead it caused the virus to go into a dormant state. Her extended period in a cryogenic sleep somehow reactivated the virus. Shortly after being reactivated, the T-Virus completely disappeared from her body but it left something else in its place. Wesker found that Jill's body now contained powerful antibodies to the virus. All those years the T-virus was inside her, it forced to develop a defense system that was nothing short of miraculous. This discovery would help further Wesker's ambitions. The development of the Uroboro virus, the centerpiece of the Uroboro's plan, had proven to be quite difficult. The Uroboros virus developed from the progenitor flower proved to be too poisonous to humans to be of much use. Instead of spurring the next step in human evolution, it only invited death. Wesker theorized that using Jill's antibodies could make the virus less poisonous. He kept Jill alive solely to produce antibodies for his research. Jill, who had Revel, who had reveled bioweapons and devoted her life to eradicating them, was ironically being used to develop the most terrible bioweapon of all. After much research and experimentation, Wesker finally perfected the Uroboro virus. Jill's participation in its development meant she was no longer a suitable test subject. Pure and unadulterated antibodies with high resistance to the virus permeated it in her body. P30 was the ultimate performance enhancer. The aims of the Uroboros uh, plan... Skip the page. <laughs> oh, I did? Yeah, yeah, yeah I this did is, it is really sensitive. <laughs> Wesker decided he would find a suitable use for her elsewhere. During the research into the progenitor virus, an auxiliary chemical was discovered. The researchers referred to it as simply P30. When administered to test subjects, it would not only give them superhuman strength, but also rendered them highly susceptible to control. P30 was the ultimate performance enhancer. The aims of the Urobos plan were to create a new breed of humans, so P30's application in this plan was inconsequential. However, for the time being, it could be marketed as a product and garner additional funding. 
Research into creating the ultimate soldier who didn't resist orders was carried out simultaneously on Las Blagas and P-30. Unfortunately, the latter had a severe drawback. The effects of P-30 would only last for a few short times. An injection of P-30 was metabolized and expelled by the body at an expeditious rate requiring readministration of the drug at frequent intervals. This greatly lessened the viability of such a product as a long-term performance enhancer. The only counter to such a drawback was to attach a device to the subject that would continually administer the drug. While P-30's effects were brief, it was still a powerful and effective drug. The effects of continual administration were untested, so in order to research this aspect further, an administration device was attached to Jill. An external device was attached to Jill's chest that would continually administer the drug to her body. With her free will constantly being observed, she remained a servant to Excella and Wesker until Chris and Sheva destroyed the administration device. Bravo for that, man. That was a long one and filled with yeah, it was fun. technical jar <laughs> jargon. <laughs> All this technical mumbo jumbo. Yeah, you become a scientist after reading this, even though it's, you know, <laughs> <For> science <real>. <laughs> fiction. <laughs> Weski, thank you for the raid, my man. Appreciate it. I hope you don't mind that it didn't want to interrupt my man Joseph here. Because this is like, we're, we're at the, wow, two more files. I thought it's one, but two more files and we're done. We've been reading this for over an hour. Jesus Christ, it really flies. <laughs> Command and Conquer. Oh, I told you, I'm, I'm, I'm dipping into the first CNC slowly. But, you know, I'm, I like finishing things, honestly. I don't like leaving things unfinished. Which is probably obvious in the channel, even when it's like a month or two, uh, something in life interrupts me, I will come back and finish, you know, what I started. That's something I value a lot, so... That's the only reason why I'm not, not going deeper into those games. I'm finishing the... I'm doing the off-stream, just for my soul, the Final Fantasy XII remaster, which is adorable. So... And I started Cameo Elements of Power, which I never played. So... I'm sometimes it's drawing me, and especially when I see you play Red Alert. The first Command Conqueror is amazing. Red Alert is even better. But uh, do you play multiplayer, Wesky? While you answer that, I'm just going to continue reading this. Raiders, work, welcome in. If you haven't fell, in, fell asleep yet, you know, fallen asleep yet, you're not going to. Oh, good. Multiplayer. Such an amazing to play against someone. I remember early days in PlayStation game rooms we had here. <laughs> if you want to play Command and Conquer with someone, Red Alert specifically, they'd let, you'd have to pay for two people and two PlayStations on two TVs. With the serial cable, I don't know if you've ever seen that, to co connect two consoles. And then they would put a big old cardboard be between us, you know, like a partition. So you can't see what the other person's doing. And we played Command and Conquer day and night. Well, mostly day, because they close at night, but like all day <laughs> on the PlayStation. And it was always my wish to try it on a PC, which is, I believe, what you're doing. Because it looks so good. Again, thanks for the raid and all the support over the time, Weski. You're just like... If there was, if there's a raid leaderboard, you're definitely up there. Do we have a lead raid leaderboard? I should check into that. But Wesky would be that employee of the month, uh, 50 months in a row or something. <laughs> That's how much you raid me, man. I really appreciate it. All right, Excella Gione, and then for finally, Mutation will get the file <laughs> about sexy Wesky. <laughs> but let's see. Oh, Excella I just hate. <laughs> hate. What did you say? said how exciting i get to review sexy whiskey yeah all 26 pages <laughs> of <him>. joy <laughs> excella gione she's italian isn't she the gione family is well known and respected throughout europe for their successful export import business her grandmother being the travis family being from the travis family the founder of tricell has endowed excella with quite a noble and storied lineage Blessed with model-like beauty and raised in such an aristocratic family has led her led to being her naughty has led to being her naughty <laughs> towards those around her, especially Godzilla got a stroke reading this shit. Okay. <laughs> Just she was naughty. She wasn't uncalled, she was naughty. Hear that, Joe? <laughs> I heard it. I heard it. Ugh. Just wrong. 
but it was neither Excella's looks or family background that got her to where she is today. Gifted with a keen intellect and inheriting her father's business acumen, Excella quickly breezed through school and enrolled in a university at a young age. There, she majored in genetic engineering and her talents were recognized by her grandmother's family. With, it's, I'm sorry, it just sounds like it's not her family, it's just like her grandmother's <laughs> family. I wonder what, how much was lost in translation in this. With her connection, she was able to enter Tricell's pharmaceutical division at the age of 18. <laughs> Only in a Japanese game. Uh, imagine like being that at 18. I don't know, maybe it happens, but it would be really rare. I, I think it's quite <laughs> rare, yeah. I mean, if, yeah, these age ranges are really low. Talk to me when you doctor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although she was a gifted member of Tricell's founding family, she was still a Gione, an offshoot of the famed Travis family. Even with all the research teams at Tricell's disposal, she was only given one. I'm sorry, I was given, you know how many research teams in my life? This many, like a big old round zero. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> Excel viewed this act as a slight. While still feeling indignant over this affront, she was approached by Albert Wesker. Wesker's interest in Excella was piqued by her intelligence and character. It was at this time he provided her with all the information he had concerning the T-virus and other research. Excella was now armed with the tools to make the advances to her career that she desired. She used the information that the technology and technology she obtained from Wesker to advance Tricell's bioweapons division exponentially. In a fortunate turn for Tricell, Umbrella, who had previously dominated the bioweapons market, had gone bankrupt, greatly increasing Tricell's sway in this area. Thanks to Excella's efforts in expanding Tricell's market share, she was given more of a voice within the company. Before long, she was making key decisions that would affect the fortunes of the pharmaceutical division. This was precisely as Wesker had intended. Excella then set her sights on the position of CEO of the Tricell Africa division. Her adroit use of flattery and intimidation soon landed her that powerful position. It is now believed that it was Wesker who suggested Excella take over Tricell Africa. He exploited her romantic interests in him and was able to use both her and Tricell Africa to further his Ouroboros plan. Excella's first order of business at Tricell Africa CEO was to restore the abandoned Umbrella Africa research facility. As the facility where research on the progenitor virus had been carried out, its use in the completion of the Ouroboros plan was vital. Following the facility's restoration, Ricardo Irving was employed to sell bioweapons in order to secure funding for the research being carried out on the Ouroboros virus. As the Ouroboros plan neared completion, Excella began to fancy herself as the queen in the new world order that would follow the plan's execution. Unfortunately for her, those dreams was those dreams was dashed were dashed when the man that was to be her king injected her with the Ouroboros virus. Whew. All right, almost there. <laughs> almost there. One more to go. All right, we saved the best for last, of course. We have file number 12, Albert Wesker. The Mansion Incident. The tragedy at Raccoon City, Rockford Island, Umbrella's Antarctic Research Facility, and the Umbrella Caucasus Research Facility in Russia. The kidnapping of the U.S. President's daughter. One man was involved either directly or indirectly with each and every one of these incidents. Albert Wesker. The motivation behind all of Wesker's actions can be found in this current incident in Africa. Wesker had already obtained samples of various organisms and viruses including the T-virus, the G-virus, the T-veronica virus, and the Las Plagas. All of these were eagerly and enthusiastically received by Umbrella's former rival companies who compensated him greatly for each. With wealth, power, and glory, Wesker appeared to have everything a person could ever want. Wesker, however, was not interested in material gains. 
an all too familiar sense of trepidation continued to gnaw at him. The source of this uneasiness being Umbrella's founder, Oswell E. Spencer. During his time in Umbrella, Wesker could never ascertain what Spencer's true intentions were. Spencer's extensive funding of BOW research was unheard of in the field. The whole reason for producing bioweapons was that it could be done relatively inexpensively when combined with the normal weapons delivery system. Spencer's extreme investment in BOW seemed unnecessary. Why would Spencer need such BOWs in the first place? To find the answer to that question, Wesker joined Umbrella's information department. Even after the downfall of Umbrella, these doubts continued to haunt Wesker. To find the answers he needed, Wesker began to search out Spencer. The only problem was that even before Umbrella's dissolution, Spencer had removed himself from Umbrella's day-to-day -day operations. Wesker had to use every resource, resource at his disposal, all his time, money, and connections. Eventually, he ascertained Spencer's long-hidden whereabouts. On the first night of autumn, as thunder and lightning raged the skies above, Wesker arrived at the ancient castle of Europe, where Spencer resided. Wesker expected the old man to be surprised by his presence, but instead the withered old eyes of Spencer lit up with dark delight as he spoke. You are back. Hold on one sec, my cat is going crazy over here. He probably also you said, did. I am pleased. <laughs> you. you know it's an exciting story, go on. <laughs> she likes it. She's excited, she's like, this is riveting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. The words barely audible amidst his cough-racked laugh. If Wesker had his doubts about Spencer before, he didn't know what to make of him now. He only knew at that moment that the seemingly feeble old man had been in control of everything that had transpired at Umbrella. Even Wesker's own actions through the years had been controlled and manipulated by this decrepit old man. With this sudden realization, Wesker now knew the source of his anxiety for all those years. Appearing to read Wesker's thought, Spencer laid out everything to him. The development of bioorganic weapons was only a means of achieving his true goal. The forced evolution of mankind via viruses. It would be the end of the current form of humanity and the birth of a new superior human race. With this new race, he would build his utopia with himself as God on Earth. In order to realize this dream, he required three things. Number one, the progenitor virus. Without this key component, his dreams would be no more than abstract ideas. Once he discovered the progenitor virus, he had the foundation on which all his subsequent plans would be built. Number two, the Umbrella Corporation. The manufacture of bioweapons was the perfect method of conducting his research on the progenitor virus. Any profits gained through Umbrella's research were secondary to his true goal. The third thing Wesker, or excuse me, Spencer needed in his grand vision was Wesker himself. Spencer knew what was required for his utopia. He also knew he would need a new human race. But what would that new breed of humans be like? The progenitor virus would spur natural selection upon the population. That was the fundamental premise behind Spencer's plan. But if the new breed of humans brought about by the selection process were unwilling to share in his vision, then there would be unwanted complications. This four-staged evolution would give the surviving humans increased strength and intelligence, but it would not affect a person's knowledge, logic, or general character. If any indolent or unsavory individual survived to be part of this new race, it would be a blight on Spencer's utopia. Spencer was not about to have his vision stained, so he enacted a plan to ensure that would not happen. This plan was called the Wesker Plan, that's an original <laughs> name, which was named after the chief researcher at the time. According to this plan, hundreds of children born of parents of superior intellect from all nationalities would be collected. If their knowledge, logic, and self-will could not be altered by genetic manipulation, then Spencer himself would instill his values into these children by whatever means he deemed necessary. These children are all given the surname Wesker, and after completion of their indoctrination manipulation, 
They were placed into select controlled environments in various locations around the world, ever under Umbrella's watchful eye. The children themselves were to be kept unaware that they were being monitored. With Umbrella's concealed aid, they all received the best educations available in the fields they pursued. After a few years, one child who showed particular promise was sent to Umbrella's training facility in Raccoon City. This Wesker child's name was Albert. Spencer was quite pleased by all of Albert's actions. And if the other Wesker children were like him, Spencer would have nothing but quality individuals for his new race of humanity. Spencer then enacted the second phase of his plan. All the Wesker children would be administered an experimental virus. This virus was administered to screen out the more gifted of the Wesker children. Some took the virus on the recommendation of a friend. Others were given the virus as part of their medical treatment. Still others had it forcibly administered to them. Albert Wesker was no different. His partner, William Birkin, gave him the experimental virus, and he administered it to himself. The screening process turned out to be a little too selective. Most of the Wesker children died, leaving only a few survivors. Albert Wesker was one of those survivors, and he disappeared shortly after. Spencer was unconcerned by this development. There was a fail-safe device attached to every Wesker. But Spencer's existence. This was the discomfort Albert had felt throughout his life. All Wesker children were programmed to seek Spencer out, which manifested itself as a growing anxiety within each of the subjects. Just as Spencer had predicted, Albert soon came to him. Unfortunately, Spencer had made one miscalculation. His failsafe only worked for as long as it remained a mystery. As soon as the mystery was revealed, Wesker no longer had a need to restrain himself. All that was impeding Wesker was a feeble old man on death's doorstep. The right to be God. That right is now mine. With these words, Wesker broke from the shackles that Spencer had laid on him. It was only random chance that brought his former subordinates Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine to Spencer's mansion at that exact time. But Wesker took it as a sign. The weak would always resist the will of the chosen. With renewed purpose, Wesker reflected on his own evolution and the evolution of the human race. After the incident at the Spencer state, he went underground and used the news of his death to veil his activities. He had achieved his goal of obtaining the virus and capital he needed from his position at Umbrella. Next, he put all his efforts into bringing his Ouroboros plan to fruition and thereby setting himself up as a god over the new generation of humanity. Bravo. Bravo. That was fun. Wow, we did them all. It took us about an, yeah, an hour and a half, exactly. Yeah, we started. an hour and a half. That's, that's a lot of reading. You can see how many <laughs> cutscenes there could have been here. Seriously, you know? yeah. They put a lot of a lot of detail in there. Most than any other game, I would say. Yeah, definitely. I just want to say, there, there's a lot of stuff I would like to comment on these files, but in that case, we would have a whole fucking session just doing that. The podcasting, as Brown would say, you know, talking about these files. There's a lot to talk about. But there were a few things that already evaporated from my mind. One I want to say is a very good, good detail is, you know, when you started reading this, it said he came to, uh, Wesker came to, came to Spencer on the first day of the autumn, which is interesting. That's September 23rd or 24th often 23rd aside from being my birthday it's also the day when the outbreak occurred in raccoon city so that's an interesting detail to put there without you know making it too obvious yeah exactly and god knows what else i was trying to god I knows have what to else what right <laughs> down like this is cool this is but yeah the files are really competent save for a few inconsistencies uh omissions even they don't mention the games they don't they were ashamed of at the time it's clear they don't mention anything survivor resident evil survivor based anything resident evil outbreak based very little on code veronica what they had to etc etc i don't know if they were ashamed of code veronica but it didn't do as well as they thought until it was re-released on uh on the xbox 360. i don't know if it was for ps3 but i know it, it was on xbox 360. But yeah, yeah, a lot like of obscurity that. with uh, Code Veronica because um, it wasn't one of the numbered entries and was considered more of like a side. 
that yeah. side plot which they didn't put much value into um but now as the years have gone on i think uh maybe they see it but uh, until they actually remake the game we may never know <laughs> but uh yeah, definitely you could tell that um, it, it's just little droplets in the water when it comes to that, which is a shame because um, in case anybody didn't know, Code of Veronica was my first Resident Evil game, so it definitely has, there's a lot of uh, love there. It's what brought about my uh, passion for this this franchise. That's where it all began. And the game itself, because you got to imagine me playing that, um, I had no previous knowledge of the games, but the way it serves the player, you don't really need to play the originals that came before it to kind of get the, the gist. And it serves as its own really fun story, right? Yeah. So it serves as its own standalone, and I think it works really well. Um, so I definitely think it needs more love and should become a more staple part of uh, this series. But we'll see. If only like a modern gen re-release maybe for me that would be probably better than the remake not not really into remakes but you know anything do something with code veronica as long as it's you know not forgotten i see fans are asking more and more for cv lately but it, it holds one of the important chapters of the of, of the lore right and uh i think so and i think it's really thrilling because it serves as a really nice piece between chris and wesker yeah. because if you don't have code veronica in there <clears throat> um the disconnect is kind of far because chris's uh, encounter with wesker it starts at obviously re and then there is there's a huge gap between it at least video game wise where there's really no interaction between the two until five and yeah. so really if you skip code veronica and you just play the the main titles it, it doesn't have that that strong sense of revenge and um the connection there because the gap is so big it goes from chris and everything that happened in re and then the conclusion in five so the in between you'd have to read files do all that stuff but if you don't do any of that stuff it, it, there's just nothing there code veronica serves as a nice little jump between because they fight in that one right so in code veronica x there's actually a fight scene between the two. There's a couple of different ones. There's a, a really just tense moments. So yeah. I think it serves the the plot behind Chris and Wesker's rivalry a lot better. So that's why, again, I think Code Veronica needs it needs its place in here because uh, it was a good jumping point between the two. Yeah, well said, well said. Which is, I was going to say, just as you started saying that, for, for me, I played, I watched Resident Evil Degeneration, Played Cold Veronica and right after Cold Veronica I played this and it just felt like Cold Veronica and Five were way more connected than Four and Five, along with Degeneration where we first hear see Trisil, it all comes together and it feels more like when it, when I think about them about Five in that context it has a lot more weight than just thinking about Resident Evil Five where, you, like we said near the end it just gets a little comical <laughs> the shit they do, but it ends with that badass exchange between Wesker and Chris and once again you're the it ends in a way you're not 100% sure if Wesker even escaped because everything detonates but because of what happened in the Arclay uh lab you assume that he did especially since his eyes were glowing red and he was doing the matrix shit and all that you know yeah see and that's what that's another thing too is um everybody hears about Wesker but I think in Code Veronica you see a lot of his abilities um full fold in that one so you see him run up a wall you see him like super dash all the really cool shit right so we do see, you see him slap a woman <laughs> yeah you, you, you see him <laughs> slap a woman. yes so you you see a lot of his that matrixy type thing that was introduced then but if you skip that entry and then you go to five you'll see a lot of that there too but um i actually find it to be a lot more cooler in code veronica there's just something about it it has a very like i said matrix vibe to it he's running up a wall and you know, he's speed dashing Chris and launching him. It's just, Code Veronica X is very theatrical. It's a lot of fun. And, yeah. um, you know, like I said, it stands out. And also, it's, to some people, it's considered one of the hardest entries in Resident Evil, which I, at the time, it didn't seem that super difficult to me. But looking back, I'm like, yeah, it actually, it's a pretty challenging game. So. 
yeah. I, 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 Until I, I, you use the lighter, cause... remember. Remember your friend. <laughs> yeah. Like, difficulty dropped the moment I started using the lighter as the <laughs> as the lighter. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, but that uh, kind of design that was unique to Code Veronica, and I think that's why some of us that played it when it was when it came out and then replayed it over the years. I think it, you told. It, you, you said before to me, it's like that to you, all the gameplay uh, elements, all the little formulas that weren't instantly noticeable, they weren't obvious over the years, you were like, huh, this only happened in Cold Veronica. The map, what I raved on about, that I'm pretty sure yep, you agreed. Yeah. How the map, how they reuse the same map, but after destruction walls have fallen, new doorways are open, all that. Yep, exactly. Brilliant, just brilliant. But, uh, okay, I think we've sucked Code Veronica's dick lo <laughs> off long enough. I think so. so. Let's get into, like, what we came here for. It's been two hours almost, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know everybody's been anticipating us playing. It is time now, so let me uh, turn on the game's volume here. So it's an extra content, Lost in Nightmares. Chris lost his partner, Jill, on a top-secret mission some years back. Find out what happened on that mission in this amazing episode of Resident Evia 5. <laughs> Hello, Wapping Waiji. Waiji. Welcome to the stream, man. Oh, the, the, the Resident Evil 5 ad libs. All right. Okay, I guess invite me when you're ready. All right, let's see if I can co op online. There you go. Let me Close. Let me, like, get, get my cat. Hold on. All right, you do that. Get my cow? I think he said cat. It goes great, man. We, we we spent almost two hours reading all the files from this game. Smashing fun. <laughs> and now we're actually gonna play the expansion. How you doing, man? Are you streaming? Are you are you doing stuff? Tech reaction co-op invite only, that's right. Okay, I'm ready. Game, game session. It sounded like you said, let me get my cow. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I need to get my cat. She's just she wants to go into uh, my daughter's room, so I had to go open the door. Alrighty. Yay, oh, here we go. Let's see if it connects right away. Switch to game session, okay. Searching for game session to join. That's such bad language after you get invited. So confusing. Searching for what? The invite you just received? It's probably not going to work yeah. at first. Yeah, it always fails on the first attempt, so try again. I think that's this game's uh, attempt to, you know, open the modem ports or whatever. It must be, or yeah. Or, like, you know, the, the CG net okay. port. For a class on wireless network architecture, join me tomorrow at 5 p.m. No, don't really. I'm not going to do that. Unless you guys <laughs> want to. I'm going to talk about it. I'm a nerd. What can I do? Hey, gamer. Glad to have you here, man. We're finally going to start shit playing. Holy fucking shit, this world. Oh. Uh, so oh, it's, it's hurting your ears. <laughs> you, yeah, the game chat is being transferred for some reason. A few years ago, the BSAA received intel as to the whereabouts of Umbrella's founder, Oswell E. Spencer. Hey gamer, let me know how the volume of the game sounds in case I need to adjust it. We accepted that mission in the hopes of uncovering some info that would lead us to Wesker. The Master of Unlocking. We're at the target's location. Copy that, Chris. Move in and procure the target. Roger that. What can you tell us about the area? The satellite scan isn't showing anything out of the ordinary, but regardless, you should expect the unexpected. Understood. We're in. Let's move. Well, you could have just broken the door if you're gonna enter like that. What's the point of lockpicking it? <laughs> Right. Awesome, thank you, man. I appreciate you checking on that for me. Uh, Joe, for some reason I hear you double. Do you hear me double? I hear you from the in-game chat. I think. Mm, no, I. Yeah. Just hear you. I do hear an echo. Yeah, it's coming back like super hard. As soon as we started the game, it started. So, options, audio settings, Let me see. game settings. I don't see an in-game chat in here. Why do I hear two Josephs? We're not in a party, are we? <laughs> so strange. Hold on, before we continue, let me try to fix that. 
There wasn't a problem yesterday, was it? No? We're not in a party? No. Say something. Gamer says there is an echo, but nothing bad. But yeah, still, well, I can hear it. It's going to bug me. <laughs> hold on, let me try something. You keep talking. Where is that audio? Okay, so, yeah, I can hear you the entire time through, I can hear you the entire time through the game, which, <laughs> is it because yeah, I, it's, it's, I don't know, man, because it's weird, because when you leave, I don't hear it anymore, so it's coming from you. Yeah, because it's so loud, it's feeding back into my microphone, you're, you're literally just blasting through my brain right now. <laughs> there is no... There is no in-game chat. Okay, let's get out of here for a second and co-op play. Just I want to I want to see if uh, quit. That's that's just okay. yeah. Yeah, that's weird because um, this is our first time encountering that through the whole story run. We didn't have this problem because I just connected the 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 headset in, but I don't want the in-game chat. There's got to be a way to disable that. You must fix it. So let's try from the top. All, usually games have the option to 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 mute the in-game chat. It would be really dumb if it weren't in there. Game settings, tutorial, subtitles, action assist, camera. Okay. Yeah, oh, Gabriel, it's a it's a raccoon. I I, <laughs> I named him Mr. Raccoon. <laughs> And it's delayed. That's the worst thing. I hear you twice, and it's delayed. Oh, nope. So, uh, Resident Evil Five. Mayo, do you know anything about that? The in-game chat. That's kind of annoying. I'll, I'll just have to ditch my contraption after all. I think if, if you can't <laughs> turn it off, which would be totally like Capcom to give you a, a an, an in-game voice chat that you can't control. You're just like fuck you. You, you want to be in a party? Tough luck. Wait oh, a minute, fuck, man. that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to create, uh, if that's wor going to work since I'm with myself. Well, what if I just create a new party? Is it going to dissolve this one? Let's t try test it. Okay. Can you still hear me? Nah, he can't. He can't be in two parties at once. Ugh. Well, I had hopes, guys. At least, the, you know, the thing works. I can, I can, I know that, that much. Hold on a second. We'll be we'll be back into action. We'll go into action <laughs> shortly, but unfortunately not not today. Night like this. I'm still disappointed. I'm still thinking there's no way there's there's no you know option to set the audio. But yes way. Apparently, very yes way. I'm in my own party, but you know I gotta be in the party with Joe. That's the only difference. <laughs> game bar and now the game bar crashed well this is why you test shit before stream but unfortunately didn't have that luxury today hello game bar oh game by game bar glitched joe i think you can hear me on my stream don't go anywhere i'll be back in a moment dish so leave the solo party leave <laughs> That's just like Capcom. Hold on, guys. Don't go anywhere. I'll fix this in a second. Mute. All right, I'm back to normal, good old TV audio. 
Gotta undo everything I did. Apologize for this, but what can you do? It's the life of a streamer. So bring back the audio in the game to normal 100. That's the first thing for everything. Whoosh. Whoosh. Then bring that down here. Poor Joe, he doesn't know what's going on unless he's watching this right now. Bring that down here to 50. Elgato game capture, yep. La la la, game's there. All that's left is to party up with Joseph. Which, good luck with that, me. The, the, the Xbox thing, he just died. Let me try to kill it. I gotta go like Looney Tunes. Oh, is it hot here, folks? <laughs> uh, what is it even called? X, X gonna give it to you. Gaming services? What if I just kill gaming services? What's what's the worst that can happen? Xbox. There you go. Xbox Game Bar. There we go. Delete. Whoop. That should have shut it down. And then restart it. Da ha 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 ha! It worked. It's booting. The frame rate might drop for a second. It's restarting all the modules, including the including the speaker module. Okay, there's there. The transport module from um, from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Are we back in? Can you hear me? So yeah, here's what happens. The game has in-game chat that you can't control or do anything about it. Automatically switches on if a headset's connected and uh, and if you're not in a party, which is just like Capcom to make something like that, you know, like uncontrolled, nothing you can do anything <laughs> about. You don't want it, fuck you, you're still getting it. <laughs> God, so, that's so annoying. Yeah. So well, Michael, how come we didn't uh, run into that problem when we did the story run? Because I didn't plug anything into my controller. I just listened to the game through the TV. But uh, oh, okay. I did today so I could hear the game. You know, I could hear it from the capture card, but with a one second delay, which kind of defeats the purpose and would mm. really make me dazed. So I'm, I'm believing with the resistance I'll be able to use this still, which is good, but not with this game. So, you know, it's not a total loss. It's just your general Capcom disappointment. They make a wonderful thing, but then it's got to have... We have an expression for that, a, a cow, the, a <laughs> wonderful cow that gives the best milk, then kicks the bucket. That's... that's. Are you hard. talking about brown now? <laughs> <laughs> no, brown Brown never kicks the bucket. He gives you the best Kicking milk. Kicking the bucket. Okay, that just sounds weird. You made me say that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to think about brown's milk. No. <laughs> no, no, don't give him any ideas either. I can only imagine the shit he would say if he said that. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going to invite you again. <laughs> Basically, okay. something... Uh, something uh, it doesn't work. It kind of works in English. They can imagine a cow that gives the best milk and then be like, "Fuck, <laughs> fuck my milk," and kicks, you know, spills the milk. Basically, not kicks the kicks the bucket. Sounds like someone died, but more like spills the milk. Yeah, <laughs> spilling the milk. To have thrown the spoon is that even an expression, Sasha? Okay, it failed. Try again. Yeah, all right. That's that's normal. That's pretty normal. That's just like uh, uh, <laughs> no reason to panic. <laughs> Is that an expression in Serbian, Sash? Why would I throw the spoon? It just sounds barbaric. Kick the bucket. Okay, I guess that's the. I don't know if I heard that. Thrown the spoon. <laughs> yes, thrown the spoon. Invite you infernal device, contraption. Yes, Mayo, get Operation Raccoon City because. Uh, we did save you a spot for that for yes, when we, we sure whenever did. we could come to that. Here we go, mutations here. All right, we can finally play. Yay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Take two. A few years ago, the BSAA received intel as to the whereabouts of Umbrella's founder, Oswell E. Spencer. Jill and I were ordered by the BSAA's European headquarters to apprehend him. 
We accepted that mission in the hopes of uncovering some info that would lead us to Wesker. Chris to HQ, come in. We're at the target's location. Copy that, Chris. Move in and procure the target. Roger that. What can you tell us about the area? The satellite scan isn't showing anything out of the ordinary, but regardless, you should expect the unexpected. Understood. Facial expressions are top. <laughs> top notch, huh? Yeah, look at the he's moving one eyebrow and just like a <laughs> piece of his face. You know, why can't we explore this in this game, like in the entire game? This looks like the most interesting. Location. Oh man, yeah, that would be great. I always liked this opening portion here because it's you know, it's like you're you're back in the mansion. Anywhere. We're gonna try this, so Mayo knows this is what Seward talked about. It, we, it should be if we check the door three times, we should go back into static camera mode. So let's see. Once. I'm not leaving until I finish this mission. Twice. Okay. I'm not leaving until I finish this mission. And three times. Question mark. Here we go. There we go. Did you get it? Yeah, I did. That's so badass. I nice. did not know that. I heard about it, but <laughs> I never awesome. Oh, wow, we're playing actual Resident yeah. Evil. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> this is oh, going to be so amazing. weird to play. No auto-aim, though, right, thing? right, Mayo? Hold on, let me check that. First of all, let me... Joseph's... Joseph's loud enough now. I swear we're both louder when we're playing than when we're reading files. I guess there is some... Uh... It could be. I don't know. How are we going to shoot anything like this? I have no idea. It's really, yeah, really bizarre. But just consider it uh, just an added layer of challenge. Handgun so. ammo, you want it? No, take it. You got nothing, though. You're also naked. Just take it. Oh, look at Wow, there. cool. <laughs> I know. I, it's, I've hard to, it's hard to tell if I'm aiming at it. Yeah, there we go. Hi. Nice, there you go. <laughs> Let's explore the rest of this. Oh, there's bullets this for you. We both so get bullets. So cool. Yes, thank you. You like it? Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, this is a whole... I mean, I've played this a couple of times. There's a whole new way to experience it, so... So weird. Okay, something and something. There you go. Whee! Yeah, gamer, it's a classic camera. I didn't know that uh, it had this. Really cool. Oh, we have the map. So, nice. So, was Seaward who told you about this? Yeah, Seward mentioned it to me. I heard it before somewhere in some game facts. Then Seward said it and reminded me, but I forgot to ask I'll him to, how. Uh, yeah, I have to give a shout out to Seward because I did not know that. And Mayor Hazard now told oh, me to I check the doors this. three times. Investigate. This blood's fresh. We may not be the only ones after Spencer. Or maybe he just had a meal. You never know with Spencer. <laughs> he just threw there's a blood. The floor. Oh, there's blood here. Should have known. He said different. Oh, should have known something something, but I didn't expect it to be different. How about this blood? <laughs> you can undo this cam by checking the door again, alright? I'm, I'm gonna try it like this. What do you say, Joe? I agree. This is Let's like the it. badass mode. So, this door is locked, isn't it? Looks like something could fit in there, yeah. What about upstairs? Let me check the other side. It's locked from the inside, so both doors on the ground level are locked. Oh Jesus Whoa. Christ! That was a body. <laughs> Look, that was so cool. Eagle Six to Nest. Do you read? We read you, Eagle Six. Go ahead. We found some men down. Thank you for the hydrate, wounds, gamer. Appreciate like it. Physically assaulted. I figure they're probably Spencer secure. Hydration. Lord only knows what killed them. Roger that. Oh, Emma. This mission wouldn't be a cakewalk. Use extreme caution. Gamer, how is there? Is the echo still present? Please let me know. It won't open for some reason. It should be gone now that we, that I disconnected the headset. But let's see. It's so weird playing. A, this is like Outbreak 3.0. Yeah, this is really cool. This kind of gives you a taste of what a, a break remake would kind of be like. Yeah. Well, I think they would still go over the shoulder. And you know, for once. For one game that I think it should go over the shoulder is Outbreak because we've seen how well it works with resistance, being able to see you know where your partners are, especially if it gets 
faster paced and you know all that it would work even like that for me but if it were like this man a lot of kids probably yeah. wouldn't play it <laughs> so awesome all right gamers reporting no echo so we're good thank you so much for that something with a square end could fit in here obviously Visit with this guy and crank <laughs> <laughs> He's obsessed. That's what he is. Man, I remember the and dialogue. Yeah, and gamer, just let me know if the audio still sounds good, if you can hear the game well enough. Oh, oh you yeah. can actually open it. Didn't I try that? I don't know what it, what it said. I, I was excited by the camera. Oh, I got a green armor. Nice. Oh, it opens the doors. Whoa, like, in, Did you see that? That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I told... This, I, I say this is more enjoyable like this than with the actual camera camera. Thank you, Mayo, for this. There's all Shakshi Spencer. Yeah. This is from his from past his mastermind days. You can't follow me into the room when I open a door, right? You have to go through the animation too. I think so. <gasps> a file. You want the shotgun? Oh, I'm good. You can take the hot shotgun. That's very nice all of right. you to ask. Thank you. It looks like pages from a diary. Some entries are missing. Hmm. Ah, May 9th, 1998. <laughs> Played poker tonight with Scott and Alias from security and Steve from research. Steve was the big winner, but I think he was cheating. That scumbag. <laughs> May 10th, 1998. One of the higher-ups assigned me to take care of a new creature. It looks like a skin gorilla to me. Scott said there had been an accident in the basement lab. I just know something like this, knew something like this would happen. Those bastards in research never sleep, not even on holidays. May 12th, 1998. I've been wearing this damn, damn spacesuit since yesterday. My skin's getting grimy and feels itchy all over. May 16th. A rumor is going around that a researcher who tried to escape the estate last night was shot. My entire body feels hot and itchy and I'm sweating all the time now. I scratched the swelling on my arm and a piece of rotten flesh just dropped off. What the hell's happening to me? May 19th. Fever gone but itchy. Today hungry and eat doggy food. Also forget to write caps. Just small caps all the way. Four. Slash slash. <laughs> itchy. Tasty. There's a note stuck between itchy, the tasty. last few pages. Few pages. Password three. I got a password. This is Ooh. such a such a throwback to RE1. Yeah, if you actually walk right over here, come over to this corner, uh, this is always my favorite camera, goes the over the top. It's so iconic. Yeah. Oh, this is really good. Yeah, it's it's from Ari one Remake, which makes you think that Wesker got obtained it and brought it to Wesker afterwards. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, to Spencer. Seriously, I don't know how else he would, would have gotten it, you know. Oh, there's a, another piece right here. I can't no. see it though. <laughs> I can't see it. I know it's there, but I can't see it. God damn it. Try it when opening the door. I'll open the door and I'll tell you how good you're aiming. Because I can see it when okay. opening the door. Aim. Got it. Oh shit, I can't see where you're aiming until I press through. <laughs> so, oh fuck yeah, that. This just... part's hard. I can't... There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Try to oh, reinvent. The hot water. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's one password I got. All right. It's like the password from the first game for the elevator. Remember when you get it on the piece of paper? Right. What a throwback! Is, I love, I love yeah, this. This is amazing. I wish this was like an option in this in the standard game because I would probably play it more. Okay, I see you doing something coming. Sorry, I had to touch shit. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck physics. <laughs> Just fuck physics. Physics uh, don't apply here. Yeah. Oh, I see one of the things. The door for... Yes. <laughs> you see it? Hold on. Um, no, I already went nice. through the door. Where is it? All right. Over here, I'll blast it in the main hall. I'll blast nothing with... Oh, oh I, found, I found one in here. If I could shoot it. There it is. Got it. I almost there. Come on. There we go, wow. Oh, that's... I got the, um, I found the MP5. Do you want that? Sure, why not? Thank you. We're going to meet up. I think you're going to oh, unlock the door downstairs, man. so I'm going to head downstairs. 
Oh, these camera angles. Yes, the dining room. Oh, that's so cool. Even with the thunder, too, I feel like I'm in RE1. Or yeah, RE Remake, like specifically. That. This is amazing. Alrighty, uh, I is think there a help? that's it. I don't see anything else. I have to jump down, so oh. let me jump down into the dining room. Nice. Wee. Zdravo, nebojša. Zdravo, zdravo. <laughs> I'm on the dining table. Are we talking to the door? Yes, I am getting older. You're not the only Eight years ago, so you're 21 now, huh? All right, let me unlock the door for you. There you go, buddy. This is so cool. It just yeah, upped the, awesome. the game in my, in my... I might have to switch aiming <laughs> with the left stick because it makes more sense uh, with these classic controls. Another I file. think it's cool how uh, Jill and Chris have different... Knifing animations, yours is more of a slash and hers is more of like a stab. You want to read this file? Yeah, look at this. Mine is like, it's the, look at the size of this knife. Holy shit, you don't need a gun. Yeah, she's got a more smaller one, but yeah, she does see, she's like quick jabs. Together we make one David King. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll read the document. Let's see. Patrick's Memoirs 1. For a time, it appeared as if Master Spencer would recover his former health, but fate was not so kind. And now he confines himself to his study for days on end. It has been ages since I've seen him take his meals in the dining hall. I have endeavored to prepare meals by his liking, and I bring them every day to the study. Unfortunately, he lacks the strength to eat anything but soup and other liquids. I cannot recall a time in the history of this household when the situation was as dire as now. In generations past, the Spencer estate was the nexus for only the most well-to-do European solicities. Now only a skeleton staff remains to look after a man who keeps himself in virtual seclusion at one of his many residents. Oh, hey, Gallo. Um, welcome to the stream. So good for you to, to drop in, my friend. My family's been in the Spencer household service since the time of his great-grandfather. This rapid state of decline would have been unimaginable even just one generation prior. I remember fondly the days of my youth, but that seems like a lifetime ago now. It was about 50 years ago, back when my father was the head butler of the household. At that time, I was learning his duties in preparation to succeed him. There was always some chore errand that would keep me running around the house. I remember how Lord Ashford, another aristocrat from a storied family, and one of Master Spencer's schoolmates, Dr. Marcus, would find refuge from the summer heat at this villa. My father and I would accompany them and do our utmost to see that they wanted that they wanted for nothing. Okay? Perhaps because I was the youngest person there, they would take to teasing me, though more often than not, they would treat me as one of them. I remember the time Lord Ashford gave me my first taste of brandy. It was on the second floor of the dining hall, behind the stone statues lining the room. I'll never forget the Maleficent scent where he opened the bottle, but those cherished times are only memories now. Uh, Ola Letty. Ola. Lord Ashford, Dr. Marcus, and of course my father have all already passed on. Only Master Spencer remains, and I'm afraid his days may be few. When Master Spencer dies, it will mark the end of his illustrious family, as well as my family's service to his. For now, I can only wait the inevitable. There's a note stuck between the last few pages. Ah, password one. Nice, hey. and it disappeared for me when you took it. That's excellent. I just want to mention something, I don't know if you noticed, it's Patrick's diary, and if you remember in Resistance, when yeah. Spencer asked for slippers... Patrick, could you fetch my slippers for me? That's so That's so good from the Resistance team to include that, you know. As, as yeah, goofy awesome. as that game can get, you know, and it's obviously not canonical, it is still somehow canonical, that, which is amazing. <laughs> Hiya. We're gonna stab everything to find all the medallions. <laughs> Someone was burning something here. Oh really? We're in the fireplace? It was the fireplace, yeah. I didn't even check the whole room. I was like, oh file, that's it. Yeah, there's the fireplace. It's a little different oriented, which I like. Little. Wonder who started the fire. They have different comments on everything. That's it cool. Seems. We'll definitely want to check everything then. Yeah, this is this is our thing now. Because <laughs> we both love the details, the cutscenes, and the... Uh, oh, this is great. Come in here. <gasps> this camera angle. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is glorious. The minimap does help, though. I won't lie. 
Oh, this is just the bathroom. With a red herb. You got a green herb? Mix them up. I have a green, so I'll take it. I'll take a piss. Nothing useful here. This looks like the... <laughs> this looks like the bathroom in... Uh... Was it Bitoris? Bitoris Mendes house? One of the houses from Mario so. 4. You know when you find the uh, Ganado taking a piss? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's in that one. In the remake, you you go into a, a same room. There's a Ganado that's in there. He attacks you when you walk into the bathroom. Nice. Oh, Patrick's memoirs too. I cannot stop thinking about the screams of those poor souls imprisoned in the basement. I administered the virus to all of them as per Master Spencer's instructions one week ago. Whatever they've become now, they are no longer human. I have assisted with multiple experiments at Master Spencer's behest. I do not know what use a simple butler not schooled in the science such as myself can be, but I should be proud that the master trusts me with this important work. He usually has nothing but contempt or distrust for those around him. However, I cannot help but feel a disconnect between how I think I should feel and my actual mental state. On the one hand, I am filled with joy at the chance to assist the master in any way I can. On the other, I feel as if I am losing a bit of my soul with each experiment I assist with. The only way I can preserve my mental faculties is by taking time off, or by trying to divorce myself from all emotion. Whichever the case, I must act and not question the master. Duty and honor, that is what is at stake. For generations, my family has been loyal in loyal service to the Spencer household. I will not betray my duties and I will serve Master Spencer until the end. I have dedicated my life to serving him, and there is no turning my back on that. It is time to check on the test subjects and report on their current condition to Master Spencer. I will carry out my duties, and I will do so honorably. Oh, no, no, okay, no file in that one. No password. But there is a piano. Man, the guy really likes his own picture. A portrait of Spencer. The guy... Is quite the egomaniac. What is what does Jill say to this? All right, Mr. Spencer. Let's see what it says. A picture of Spencer. Too bad there's no hidden switches. <laughs> That's great. Wonderful. What about the piano? Oh, that's cool. Would Chris even try it? He'd be like, nah. Oh, I have to. That's right. It's a, it's a button sequence. Okay. I didn't know that. I never played Jill in this. Yeah, it just brings up uh, different buttons and you just press them. Look, I'm threatening you to play. No, don't shoot. Yeah, I'm almost done. I'm gonna dance while you play. <laughs> like a ballerina. I think it's open. Can you go through? Oh yeah, it's open. You're right. Go for it. Oh shit. Centaur trapped, emblem man. and a red uh, thing. I'm gonna take the emblem. Picked up centaur. Nice. Emblem. What about the switch here? Oh, can I shoot the switch maybe? Isn't that what you used to open the door? Nope, you opened it while by playing. Oh, hey, Profi Play, welcome to the stream, my friend. All right, let's see. All right. Well, we what got would the emblem, Chris say? So... I never took piano lessons. Well, that's simple and easy, Chris. <laughs> he can't play, sorry. <laughs> He's allergic to piano. <laughs> Alright, we're going through. Oh, this just looks glorious. I can't get over it. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you wanted to play this way. That's okay, it's the potty. Oh, yeah, can't go through right. there. The footsteps in. in Resident Evil games are just... 
mesmerizing. Luke mentioned yeah, it it's... recently, even in the first game, the, the original, not the remake. The footsteps are so carefully choreographed. Yeah, they really are. Never get tired of listening to them. Yeah. Can I open the other side? No. Oh, yeah, you yeah, can. So now we can put the emblem on the door. It was this door, right? Yeah. Yep. But you can't really, you can't really check it. Yeah. You inserted the center emblem. All right. I'm doing good, uh, Profi. I'm doing really good. Hippie and I are just doing the DLC for RE5 Lost in Nightmares. Uh, was that what the what the book 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 book? Do you see another piece? I thought I saw something, but it was just in my imagination. It's locked. Jill might be able to get it open. All right, get your I can pick it. Master of unlocking acid here. I'm gonna check the other side. The we gonna... Master of unlocking. Oh shit! Did you find something? I found a, a room. I'm gonna go back to you. I'm not exploring on my own. Okay. Did she say something? Uh, I found another document right oh, here nice. on the shelf. Spencer's Memoirs 1. Read it. I, Oswell E. Spencer, founder of Umbrella as well as its chief executive officer, hereby proclaim myself as ruler of all mankind. Everyone <laughs> shall... <laughs> That's really what it says? That's literally what it says. I Hereby proclaim that. myself as ruler of all mankind. Everyone shall prostrate themselves before me as they once did for the ancient false gods. At, la or at least that is what my destiny should have been. But I did not become a god. I could not sever my ties to my own weak humanity. Instead, my body is being destroyed by this damn disease, the disease of age. It has carved wrinkles in my face like a well-weathered canyon, and my arms are like the thin, withered branches of a dying tree. Age has even deprived me of the use of my legs. The only chance I'll ever have of becoming a god and shaping humanity's destiny is to stop this disease from continuing to ravage my body. I believe there's a saying about realizing the joys of life when one is at death's doorstep. Sayings like that are for the weak who are going to die. They attempt to mask their fears with pithy... What's that word? A Aphor... Pithy, How yeah. do you say that, Hippie? Aphorisms. Aphorisms, thank you. Mortals can't comprehend what life means for those whose death is not a concern. The ignorant are fond of making generalizations to include those who would not be party to their pedantic musings. Shallow and pedantic. I will undo this unjust travesty done to me by time, and I will present myself as the perfect being that will rule over all mankind. I will give them a new set of commandments to govern their lives. All that remains is to find the key to eternal life. The virus manufactured by Umbrella is that key. It suppresses telomere shortening, which negates the function that limits cell division. Somewhere in that process is the key to immortality. If the process could be perfected, that key would be mine. I have the means available to me. I could realize my ambitions thanks to Alex. I lost much in human capital following Umbrella's bankruptcy, but I still have Alex, the best and brightest of them all and the last of my children. I have faith that if anyone can find a cure for the ailment of time that keeps me from assuming my role as the head of mankind, it is Alex. Alex will find a way. That, that's always really cool that they mention Alex Wesker. Yeah, I totally. Game, uh, I skipped that because so she meant nothing to me back then. You know? Come on. By the way, that's uh, completely true. Uh, was completely true. That's suspected to be true. Telomeres, they're like the little tail ends of the DNA strands. They're found to have something to do with, uh, <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> with the aging process. And appears that people who, in whom the telomeres do, don't shorten as much they live longer so that's actually grounded in reality hey dragon welcome to the stream man thank you for tuning in how you doing investigato oh my god i turned on the computer i don't know it's... if you remember but it's dragon we used to play resistance with him the dragon era dragon era really? dragon wow yeah, dragon yeah. i haven't it's seen been a long you... time jesus in <laughs> like over a year i think two years maybe wow hi dragon Dragon, my Kragan. Thank you, Profi. Thank you very much, man. Um, let's see. Spencer's Memoirs 2. 
I've done everything Alex has asked of me. Alex's ingenuity for far surpasses those of normal people. We wait for the appropriate time, gather the necessary materials, and Alex continues to keep the operation running smoothly. Most children are held back by the limits of their own intellect, but not so with Alex. I've never witnessed anyone so adept at absorbing the talents of others simply by observing them. I could not be more pleased. Alex displays superior qualities to everyone else. Sorry, sorry. I since, provided since, everything. Since Dragon's here, you gotta say that like Spencer. Uh, I could not be more pleased. I could not be more pleased. <laughs> yes. I can't do it as well as he does. But... Yeah, he just really nails it. I am pleased. <laughs> Go on, my friend. <laughs> Um, I provided everything Alex and the other research. <laughs> the dragon says, several years, hippie. Hope you are well. You too, my friend. I'm doing good. Um, I provided everything Alex and the other researchers would need to conduct their research. Unlimited funding, top-of-the-line equipment, research materials, and an endless supply of test subjects. The only thing wanting is time. They will conduct their research on an isolated island in the South Seas that is home to an abandoned military installation from a nearby country. Alex has already gone there with a group of research assistants. Research materials and hundreds of test subjects. I waited in earnest for good tidings of their research. Instead, I received only a phone call a month later asking me to send more test subjects. How was it possible that they'd gone through hundreds of test subjects in only a month? As my frustration rose, Alex attempted to reassure me. You'll be pleased to hear that all experiments are running smoothly. And so, I continue to wait. There's two more documents here, at least. Are you it's here. your turn. Spencer's Memoirs 3. <clears throat> I have... I have waited and waited. I'm not going to do that with the voice the entire time. I'm already tired from two hours of reading shit, but yeah. For real, we read so much. <laughs> reading session with Mutation the Hippie. I have waited and waited. Still no word from the island. It's been a year since they left a Kent, and I've sent thousands upon thousands of test subjects for their research. As soon as Alex makes an improvement to the virus, the team administers it to another batch of test subjects. Unfortunately, they do not have time to study the virus before testing it. If it looks feasible, they proceed forward and see how the test subjects react to it. All of this is to be expected, I suppose. It's not Alex's fault. I have been impatient, true, but the situation is dire. Age has not only worn down this worthless shell, but it has also attacked my internal organs and rendered many of them virtually useless. What little functionality I can eke out of them is only thanks to the machines attached to my body, my sexy body. Time is a merciless enemy. I'm counting on you, Alex. Only you can give me the key to eternal life. There's one more here. All right, let's see. Come on! Over here. You want to read it? All right, I'm going to look at the computer. Let's see. It says, where am I going to find three passwords? So we have two. We need one more. Yeah, it's probably in one of the documents. Spencer's memoir is four. Let me just... Senpai? Hello. Thank you for the lurk. Hello, Appreciate Senpai. It. Senpai's getting ready to bed for bed around this time. How do I know? I live under his bed just like he lives under mine. We have like like bed inception, bedception. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a report of success. The experiment was a success. Well, they just took his lines from resistance when he went. They did. <laughs> The news alone has sent a, few, a new surge of energy coursing through my veins. I feel rejuvenated. Last night's dinner even tasted sweeter. The wine more excellent. My butler, Patrick, is truly a culinary savant. Savant. He even found my slippers when I asked for them. Unfortunately, <laughs> that joy was short-lived. Alex has disappeared. I would be less concerned if that were only 
they were the only regrettable report from the island. Holy shit, I now see how this ties into Revelations 2. Uh huh. Wow, newfound respect. The other researchers are also nowhere to be found. Neither are the thousands of test subjects. And most importantly, all the research materials, including the final virus that was to make me a god, cannot be located. Could be Mayo, could be. Hey, Code Ashley, welcome to the stream. Thank you for tuning in. Code Ashley, oh, remember from Profi's uh, stream. Yeah. Hello, Code Ashley. That's a name you can't forget. <laughs> Hello, Code Ashley. I have been betrayed. I have allowed myself to be betrayed again. I shouldn't have learned from my mistakes with Albert. Now my life stands on the edge of a knife. The only person I can trust is my loyal butler, Patrick. He is my last hope in locating the virus that will cure me of this wretched ailment. But is time on my side? That is the question that preoccupies my mind. And only the God I am to become can answer that question. Well, you're kind of in a paradox there, man. <laughs> Any more files in the shelves? I think that's it, yeah. Four files in one room. Sheesh. Damn. I think it's in this room where I ventured. We're gonna find uh, All right. the final Go piece. Go take a look. Oh yeah, this is my voice, Code Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> this is me. Oh yeah, you didn't play with voice with them. That's right. Holy shit! Come here. Look at this corner. Come this is our one remake at its best. Come here, where I am. Oh hey, I found a proximity bomb. Nice. I, I found another one and another one. Look at this angle. When, when oh, it puts the cool. item in focus, I love that. Yep, yep, that's definitely classic Ari right there. Just gonna stuff my pockets. So you got proximity yeah. bombs. Yep, you got the grenades. All right, let me just let me just do this setup a little better. This is just shit. So like yeah. that, like that, and uh, you be there. The bird cages too. They also remind me of the remake because in the mansion you you find the bird cages. Yeah, the ravens inside. I mean crows. Yeah. But Ashley says, I love this game. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's uh, definitely one of my favorite co-op experiences for sure. Oh, there we go. I knew there was something else here. It's The item is glinting. Look at that over there. If you're standing here, Yeah, that's so glinting. cool. <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, it's the HNK, the PSG. Oh, wait, what's that? The sni sniper? Is that a sniper? I'll it's take the, sniper. the machine gun. Machine we'll continue gun. like we started. I'll be the yeah. automatic pistol guy. Thanks, Sounds man. good. Basically, our guns from the campaign, so yeah, perfect. Yeah. Especially with this aim, it's gonna be fun. Heart sensitive, heat sensitive paper. Heart sensitive? <laughs> oh, so we gotta we gotta warm it Take up. Take it to the, the fireplace. Yeah. Uh -huh. Locked from the inside. What, what the? Wait, how do we even? Yeah, there's a there's a padlock on the other side if you check it. <laughs> I like the way she kicks it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but this okay. little hole here we've been here yep this is amazing okay what this about awesome. i'm gonna check if there's a medallion here in the corner just in case road ashley asks have you ever done a live re village i have not as a matter of fact i've never even played village um but it is on my to play list i just haven't gotten there i uh, plan on playing it first with my wife um and then after i do a playthrough of that with her at some point in the future, I want to do like an RE marathon, and that will be a course in the lineup. My man. Wait, was the the fireplace was in the dining room? That's right. Yeah, it's in the dining room, so all the way back, yeah. Oh, God! It's just a fucking bat. You would expect something that would hurt you, but it's, it's like... It's um, Can I even shoot it? I'm going to try. Go to hell for, you know, endangering bats. Yeah, you can shoot them. What's the point? Why would you want to kill them? Well, I don't know. Maybe they infect me, man. Who knows? <laughs> I hear music. Where's that coming from? Not me this time, I'm sure. It's like Westkey playing a song for us. Sounds like were... a piano somewhere. Kind of cool. Let's go to the piano room. Want to check it if someone's there before we put the thing on the fireplace? Um, sure. Code Ashley asks, do you yeah. like cooperative games? Yes, I do. I absolutely love cooperative games. 
think it's the best way to play a lot of games. It's just having an, a shared experience with somebody else. Um, it's uh, it's unbeatable. I Especially if you can do it uh, like uh, back in the day we used to play couch co-op like how Hippie and uh, his wife, they do it. It's, you know, that's so much fun. Where was the piano? In which room? I already forgot it. Actually, you need to memorize the map in this house. Whew. Um, I, I'm already in the dining room, so I went back to... Yeah, I saw that, but I'm trying to remember where the other room was. We went somewhere. Oh, the big door. Hold on. I think it's, I yeah, so you go through the dining room, and then you, you go upstairs. I'm already in the room, but nobody's in here, so... Electronic locks. I don't broke. know where that. I don't know where that jingle's coming from. It's somewhere, but it's cool. But Spence, he's <laughs> like he dropped his Walkman and it's just playing around. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> listening to that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go back into the dining room. All right, I'm in the dining room. I can meet you. Imagine more fixed camera games like this. Burn so I'm paper. gonna burn the paper. We're both doing okay, it. I'm, I'm inside you, Jill. That sounds that's bad. Funny. How are we doing <laughs> that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that's both so, look so at weird. It, that's great. Password 2. We got all awesome. three. Alright, let's go type them into that computer device. I've never used the keyboard, so you gotta do it, Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Imagine that. Alright, here we go. I feel like right at home with this camera and these controls, honestly. Yeah, it's very com like very comfortable. They only built the doors for one person at a time, though. I think when you do that, this secret passage is going to open. Yes. Let me go ahead and get to the computer. I'm watching Enter the door. passwords. Umbrella. Patrick's Memoirs 3. I've been in Master Spencer's employ for the majority of my adult life. As of late, however, I find his actions to be inscrutable. For example, he's taken every possible precaution to conceal his whereabouts from the outside world. For what reason, I don't know. Then one day he asked me to find a certain man and make him aware of the master's whereabouts. I don't know why he would go to such lengths to contact this man, but perhaps he wanted to see if someone could find him. The man in question is one Mr. Albert Wesker, a name I've not heard in quite a long time. I only met him once, and that was over ten years ago. I'm ashamed to admit that I cannot recall his face, because as head butler, it is my job to remember people. The reason, I believe, is because of his eyes, those cold, unfeeling eyes that completely overshadowed his other features. At any rate, I have endeavored to get the information into Wesker's hands without letting on that it was Master Spencer's desire that he had that information. I know of a certain unscrupulous individual who could put the information on the streets for the right price. He is the kind that does not care who he talks to. What made the individual I found of such importance is that he is in the employ of a female spy who has regular dealings with Wesker. I paid this man. I forgot if his name was Roberto or Ricardo, more than he deserved and gave him the bare minimum of information necessary to fulfill Master Spencer's wishes. I dutifully carried out Master Spencer's directions to the letter. It was at this point that the situation took an even more cryptic turn. The master, he let me go, but I do not know why. I asked him for a reason the only time I've ever questioned him, but he responded with only silence. I do not know what to do now. I'm filled with a sense of loss. Everything I've ever known is gone. I dedicated my entire life to serving the Spencer household, and now that book has been forcibly closed for no apparent reason. The only ones who remain will be those untrustworthy security guards and the people in prison below the premises. I truly doubt the guards' ability to attend to all of Master Spencer's needs. Could it be that he plans on dying? No, he's not that type of man. He would not want to leave all his affairs in such an unfinished state. Master Spencer must have some grand machinations at work that are beyond my ability to comprehend. At any rate, I can only obey his wishes and take my leave. I will be loyal until the end, even if it breaks my heart to do so. There's another file here. It looks to be a list of test subjects. Test subjects. One, Hans, two, Felicia, three, Marco, four, Jonah, five, Irma, six, Ken, seven, Laura, eight, William, nine, Hiro, 
10, Derek, 11, Miles, and I think 12 and 13, of course, is Alex and Alex Wesker and Albert Wesker. Oh, so cool. the Wesker children. So huh? those are the, the 13 Wesker children, right? Scooby-Doo and the 13 Wesker children. I believe so. Okay. <laughs> the number Thanks, of though. candidates has been limited to the 13 individuals listed above. Oh, oh God. Checkpoint. Oh, now you can read that. I couldn't read that until you finished. That's so weird. Oh, Profi, thank you so much for the sub, man. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. Woo-woo. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. Are you pleased? Thank you very much. Oh, shit. Why did I have to go in first? How do I not become a jail sandwich? What the fuck do I do? I should shoot the thing? Crank. We gotta shut it off. I got the square crank. Is that gonna help me? What the? What do I do? Why do I find myself in these situations? I don't see anything to handgun ammo. I'm oh, coming, I think I gotta shoot this, and you gotta set me free from the other side. That's the door we couldn't open. Remember? So I think you gotta run around to the other door. Oh god, I'm like running in a circle here. Yeah, look at the mini map. R B, R one. Yeah, that's the. You're going the right way. The spikes are close. Oh, thank you. And there's a medallion here. Mayo says RE1 remake sold run, over 10 million copies with re-releases. I didn't know that. That's impressive. Why the fuck do we get more over the shoulder? No, 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 no. I remember. I, I meant. Why don't we get more static camera RE's? Did you get it? Hold on one second, folks. I can't seem to hear Hippie anymore. Really? Oh. Hippie, if you can hear me, I can la, 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 hear la, 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 you. La, la. Your audio has la, la, now la. vanished. La 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 la. Oh, okay. Testing. There we go. There we go, now I can hear you. What happened? Yeah, I muted myself, but it wouldn't unmute you. It's a bug with the... So you saved me with all this. I was screaming and saying shit. You didn't hear any of that. That's amazing. I was like, pull the lever. The door. I opened the door on the other side. And that's that's no a partner you put your life in. Yeah, you trusted me. We delivered. Um, Profi, yeah, go ahead. If you notice that there's any bots, feel free to um, block them. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So Mayo said, uh, you probably didn't hear that, uh, Mayo said RE1 Remake sold over 10 million copies with re-releases, which really begs the question, why don't we get more static camera REs? You know, obviously people like playing that shit. I know I have RE1 Remake for the GameCube, for the Xbox 360, and for Xbox One. So that's like three copies of that game, even though I played the GameCube most, just to show love and support, you know. But, uh, you know, it makes no sense. So what is it that you picked up from that wall? The crank. That was the, cr the <laughs> yeah. crank, right? Okay. Yeah, but there's a medallion right. here that I can't see now. I could see it with the other uh, camera angle. It's somewhere up there. Or It was right somewhere. under the thing. Oh, darn it. We're never going to find it this way. <laughs> we can't see it. If we had a bazooka. <laughs> if we could just blow up the entire ceiling. Yeah. Which, the, the things seem to be some kind of currency here. Who knows? It's on one of the sides. Never gonna find it now. Alright, well. That's okay. Because in the cutscene, you could see it right underneath this thing, but you know. Alright, so probably... we know we need to use the crank mm. underneath the stairs in the main hall, so. Yeah. I'll go ahead and do that. What is it? It's like I'm hardwired to like this camera. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Well, it makes no sense. Yeah, Why I wish this make... was an option for all the games. That'd be really cool. I mean, they went to the trouble to add third-person camera to RE8, which, in my opinion at least, it's just weird. The game was obviously made for first person, so it's it's like trying to... Oh, we got a crank. Let me use my giant arm. Crank it real good. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Okay, is there one for you there to hold? Yeah, there's one right here. Hold it. I'm coming. Oh, shit. 
Wow, it had to fall down, huh? God, could you imagine if you were standing into that? You... <laughs> Jill there wins. We go. Gatality. 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 Murder with a gate. Okay, not, not there. Skulls? Why the fuck do you have skulls, man? <laughs> People There's... died down here. Well, probably all the test subjects they were, they were talking about. Place is scary. Come on! Nope, sorry. Come on! Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Come fit. On. I can't fit. There we go. <laughs> I couldn't fit next to you. <laughs> they could, Mayo. They could make both fixed camera and third person RE games. Really? There, oh, it's go. not first. It's not the thing anymore. Okay, we're in. Normal oh god, camera. this looks promising. Wait, before we do it, come on, let's go back now. When the camera reset, I'm really curious if it's gonna reset. Oh shit, we can't even go back. Too late. Oh, yeah, we're back to the regular camera now. That sucks. Yeah, because you, you actually well, don't fight with that camera. It makes sense. Yeah, Mayo says it. That, yeah, it's because of enemies. They, did, they didn't trust us to be able to kill shit. How dare they? It's so weird being able to strafe now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like cool. that, that was a nice field. little like, nice yeah. Little Easter egg, so. Yeah. Got to enjoy it for a little bit. Or you're the tough man. After you. I'm the going up ahead, soaking the damage and dying, man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's my job in this game. So yesterday, I don't Ghost. know, oh, shotgun shells over here. Come yesterday, on. I don't Ooh, know if thank you. You, how much you saw of Baldur's Gate, but you know, playing the sorceress, which is paper flimsy, and I never played anything but the fighter, with Sasha there being able to tank all the damage, they still <laughs> kept aggroing me. All I did for most of the <laughs> session was just hold, held the shield and let her... That's that's where they kept the test subjects. No, it's kind of like when we played the story, everything wanted to kill Chris. Yeah, like, they totally, <laughs> they go around you to get to me. That's what they did yesterday. And I thought, maybe I just did something wrong in these games. <laughs> it's more than luck. Bad luck. What is that? Awesome. Thank you, Profi. I appreciate you doing that for me, my friend. I don't know what was Says, going on here. But I wonder how many innocent, ah, oh, darn it, innocent people lost their lives in these horrible experiments. Rifle ammo. Ooh, cool. For me, it says, I don't know what was going on here, but it was obviously quite barbaric. What about here? Okay. Some, some shit's going Come on, here. hippie. Can you check this? Sure. I guess this is that where is... they kept their test subjects. Mine says, it looks like a holding area for test subjects. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get He's bonked lurking. In the head. He's lurking. Oh, is that that's an item, isn't it? Oh, thanks, love. I forgot what the alarm was was for. I would just turn it off. <laughs> an item where I see a what well, looks like a light reflection. Wait, wait, wait. Mayo says I think fixed camera mode removes enemies in the mansion. So, are there supposed to be enemies in the mansion? I don't remember. I don't remember there being enemies in the mansion, to be honest. Oh, he says never tested on veteran or professional. Where I suppose there are enemies in the mansion. Oh. So I'm deaf again. It's very hard to hear the game without, you know, causing the echo because it's on TV, but it's not playing on my headset because it would be delayed because of Agato. So all in all, just be my ears, <laughs> man. I, I'm very... There, I'm, there's I'm, some, I'm... some banging noises going on, so uh, I would suggest to proceed. Banging noises? Like, who would bang that old man? <laughs> it's disgusting. It's disgusting. <laughs> I am pleased. Please me more. I please. am pleased. Yes. Oh, another medallion. Ah, what the fuck happening? It's got me. It's a demon. I shot him in the. Well, it didn't count. Behind you. Somehow he's behind you. <laughs> I stabbed him and he definitely didn't like that. Die, 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 die. Achieve <laughs> Man, they're malnourished. I almost feel bad for killing them. Ooh, ooh, I guess nobody ooh. fed them in a while. Oh, we have a very large enemy downstairs right there. Alright, I'm coming. He just turned the corner. Be careful, he's down there. I'm gonna take some ammo. I am. That guy's gonna jump up as you. Be ready to save me. Hacha! Oh. That was underwhelming. 
let me add some volume if there's some echo in the oh god in the, in the stream guys let me know oh my god what the fuck is that even <laughs> it's a big butter do oh. oh is that the butler oh. oh i'm cornered this is not a good place to go Woohoo! let's go find a more open space we can we can loop him upstairs i think yeah bravo i was gonna say use the mine ah. but... I'm throwing a grenade. Run. Whoa. Uppercut. Oh, I think we can connect hits on him, huh? Oh, what the hell? Oh, back off. Did his butt explode? He's dead. Nice, he's dead. All right. So all it took was a mine, a grenade, and a shit ton of... Oh, his weak points definitely on his back where the eye is, so... Oh, he had an eye. I didn't even see that. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Give him a nice... Give him a nice little sweet kick. <laughs> Mayo says, there are enemies in Mansion on Veteran and Professional. Uh, you could try it next time. You know, maybe we will. With, I'm, I'm very confident with Joseph. Especially if yeah. by that time I somehow make it that I can hear the game. Be... They're called Blob. These co really, they're called Blobs? There's two of these in the Mansion on Veteran, <laughs> three on Professional. The Blob. We just... There's wow. another one upstairs. Blob? Yeah, I can hear him. He's walking upstairs. Oh. Alright, I'm gonna go up ahead. Nah. Oh, he's gonna jump, I think. I'm gonna throw a grenade at him. Mother of oh, God. Uh, I, I, ah, oh, shit. I, I, Captain. Oh, you can shoot the eye from the front. Here, I'm gonna place a angle. little mine here. Yeah. Go, hippie, go. I'll be ready to shoot his winky eye. What's up? Ooh. Can we can we combo him? No. Straight. Oh. Nice. Hi. Shit, 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 shit. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Oh. We got stuck on each other. Oh, it killed oh, me. Oh wow! Instantly. It one shot you. One one oh, one man. swung you. <laughs> it did. That's a one right, shot. Again, watch out! You jump. <laughs> I guess the pickaxe of power really hurts. Apparently so. You can shoot the eye at the angle. Let's let's use that to our. Uh... Mother of a god. The scariest enemy is being getting stuck on your partner. Run, 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 run. We. We can loop him here, can we? Yeah, we can loop him here. Punch Back him in the off, face. Ugly. He's going for you, run. Uh, oh, I that's a fucking... Yeah. I am, I am. He's leaking... He's leaking bio-weapon juice. He's leaking good. Woo! He's turning... Your turn. Oh. Alright, I can do this. Oh, he's turning again. Oh my god. He's angry. Alright, get him, baby. There we go. In the nice eye. Job. Down, boy. Give me my score. Down, sir. Is that the... Arid Dragon says he believes they're called Guardians. Guardians. Guardians of the Spencer Estate. The damage Whoa. is the same on all difficulty in Lost in Nightmares. Okay, the difficulty only increases the enemy amount and HP. I didn't know that, Mayo. Thank you for the... No. Thanks for sharing your knowledge, guys. We appreciate it. Yep. We sure do. Okay, well, there's two barrels there. If you can lift me up there, that'd be great. Yeah, I can. That's that's the thing we saw earlier. And there's a... Uh, wait, there's this. Can you open the chest first? Because I have to what hold chest? it. Uh, where we were, I'm opening the, the lattice. Sure. The whatever. <laughs> Arrow Dragon says, or maybe it's Patrick. <laughs> maybe it's Patrick, yeah, and his little baby clones. Uh, we have a key. Jail key, nice. Move away, drop in the spiky thing. Right, let me throw you up there like you're my Pokemon. Pokemon! <laughs> I got, I got. Bullets, bullets. Nice. Oh, we're really good with bullets. 
I got... Do I have something that belongs to you? No. We got shotgun and uh, rifle, so we're gonna be okay. Alright. Use key. Okay, I believe this key is... Yeah, okay, you're right at the door. I somehow have it even though you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Geronimo! Going down! There's poop water here. Ah. Disgusting. <clears throat> where? I hear crazy music. I don't see where it's coming from. Uh, right across this way. I see him. Okay, let me try. Nice. You can snipe him from here, maybe. Oh, never mind. He's coming. Run. Nice. I'll shoot the eye. Nice. You sent him back two generations. Time to jump here. Shotgun shells. We'll get them later. Let me know if there's anywhere to go from there. You can still snipe him in the eye from here. Before he comes. Man, he can really jump. Alright. Uh, grenade out. Because I cornered myself. Shit! No, hippie! That was a wasted grenade. And... Oh dear. Is he coming to your way? I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot him in the back. No, he's coming my way now. He's he's coming your way. He's really changing his mind often. Again? Yeah, he's dead. Alright, good job. Damn. Down to twenty six bullets. Good used pistol, Chris. Really okay. well used. You got that piece, open the chests over here. What do we got? A silver, silver crest. crest. I gotta throw you up there again. Okay. <laughs> Going up. Pick a Jill, go! Me! <laughs> oh, that's music. Oh, God, another one. Can you snipe him? Shit, he's coming down, oh, Steve. Uh. Run! I'm gonna try to take his attention. Well, whoever takes his attention, the other person just shoot him in the back, I guess. It, he was. He's made. For two partner people to kill. Alright, he's aggro to me. I'm coming behind him. Down, boy. Punch him, punch him in the face. Oh. No third hit. Run! Oh, oh, me. oh me. shit, 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 shit. Still alive. He, he was just pushing you. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 no, that's the worst bioweapon ever. Alright, he's coming this way. I'm gonna just gonna move away for a bit. Come on, sucker. Alright, he's aggro to me. Man, we really sandwiched him. Like a Jill sandwich. <laughs> ah! Where are you, fuck boy? I'm stuck. Uh. Okay, so he definitely doesn't like that animation. No one gets stuck there again. Oops. He's gonna see his dead brother and be like, very angry. The angle's not good. What, you ugly bastard, where are I you? I hope I'm making an opening for you. He's up there on the balcony thing. I see him. He's turning towards you. Down. Down, boy. Well, good start. Job. Thank you, more classic enemies are good. Insert slate. The gate mechanism has something, something. It's been unlocked. What? Why is it not doing shit? <laughs> it says go forward. Oh. Oh, we have to. It's a. <laughs> yeah. It only works when two people go to it. Ah. After all of that, imagine being dead, being dead. Imagine being killed by a, by a rotten plank. Right. And they survived that. Why without... are we always in dirty water? Yeah. There's always these like super locations. Yeah. But only in RE2 remake and RE3 remake do you see the effects of that.
the headset suddenly feels very uncomfortable for some reason. Is it hurting your head? Yeah, my my ears actually. Oh no. Which is. Oh god, we're naked. We have no weapons. Wait, what? What? Why did we lose all our shit and fall? How the understand. fuck are we even like prestige agents? This incompetent. Where 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 are they? If they we fell here, where could I our weapons have gone? You know. Thank you for the treat, gamer. I appreciate. It. Very nice. I can't un I can't home. unequip the grenades. Oh shit. Looks like something could fit into this green block. I forgot how this works, I only beat, played this twice. Sasha, we played this, didn't we? Yeah. I remember very little. That's that's a sound I don't like hearing. Oh, mother of god! Where are you? I'm coming for you! Oh, Jesus Christ, the zombie! <laughs> we, ha we have to knife them to death. Okay, they die easily at least. There's a big guy. He's chasing you. We gotta find something here. Something could fit in here. Survive, you have to survive. Oh shit, he's coming for me. I'm running. Whoever's not being chased, you gotta investigate and remember what we need to do. Oh, there's a star here that looks like it could be pushed. Blue block, need something for Oh, I found a first aid spray, nice. Nice. He's with me. Okay. I'm just gonna guide him around this pillar while you investigate. I think that can be useful right there. Alrighty. He's not really smart, he's just brute. It's a, it, it looks like a big uh, homage to Lisa Trevor, doesn't he? Oh, there's a spider up here. Ooh. A spider. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found the crank. Nice, okay. red crank. You gotta find a red slot for it. How do we win the war on bioterrorism? Easy. They weren't <laughs> smart. We just led them around the pillar and they were useless. <laughs> Alright, Hippie, I'm putting in the crank. You right, gotta lure him over here so I can crush him. Let me see where you are. Okay, I see you. Alright, I'm coming. But don't crush me. I'm coming under the thing. Come here, ugly. Oh, hey. this way. He's going the other way. He's going for you. <laughs> okay, I, I, I got him. I got him. I got him. He's not really smart. Okay, he's coming. Alright, pull, 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 pull. Oh, good. Oh. Well, that's a one-use contraption. We both got a flash grenade, huh? Climb up. Sun Eater Sun nice. Serpent Shard. Cool. Let's explore some more before we are rudely interrupted again. Hey, gamer, is the audio still really good? How are we, how are we looking? Hey gamer, we gotta you gotta do it with John's voice. We need John in here. Hey gamer, <laughs> I can't do his voice, man. He's he's three years younger than me, and his voice sounds about ten years older, but like in a good way. There we go. What the hell was that noise? I hear something. What did you do? I heard something. Some shit. I oh, another I the... another asshole. <laughs> I put in the shard. We need, I think, the blue crank now. All right, you keep searching for that. The asshole's going to the long hallway. So far, he doesn't see any of us. I can see him on the map, somehow. The Guardian of Ass. I'm just gonna follow him slowly. Just so I see him on the map. Where can I take? Let me see. He's going towards the green uh, thing. Oh, you can hide on the walls. Where do you hide at? Well, just like off wall. Like when we're shooting with the Magini, you know. Gotcha. Oh, okay. This is open now. I go through here. I found the purple crank. A violet crank, whatever. Oh, that's the one. That was blue, but I guess it's purple. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Not a good time, sir! Come on, come on. Watch out, he's somewhere close. Alright, he doesn't see us. Where's the thing? Did we kill it? Fuck it, let's get out of here. Okay. I think if we walk, it doesn't hear us as well. See, this would be way more fun for the base game. Isn't this already more fun than this the base game? This is amazing, game? yeah. 
I actually got jump scared twice. Can't say that green. for once. In the I see the purple one. There it is. Violet. I'm sorry. Oh, Violet. He's on the other side. So oh, there's two of them, Joe. There's two of them. One on each side. So we gotta be careful. Alrighty. Let's not get cornered. There's the purple nurple. Now I just gotta find the crank slot. I'm gonna go up here. Oh, is it up there? The oh, crank nice. slot? Don't know. Found some boxes. Holy shit, I didn't see the purple. Ah, it's a snake. Ow. Watch out, one of the guys is nearby. You, you can actually hide from them. Which is oh, good. I think the slot's over here. Yeah, it's right over here. Is it purple? Yeah, he's look, look, look up. He just jumped. Oh shit, I see him. So one of us gotta lure him to the purple squisher. You wanna be the lure or the cranker? Oh, he's gonna oh, ignore yeah, us. The other one. The other one. Yeah, I think the other to... one. Where the th hell is the other one? He's over there where you're looking. But in the hallway. He's circling the hallway. Yeah. All right. Let me see. I'm gonna hide here until you find him, so the other guy doesn't see me. See if I can get him to come out. The other guy's coming here. I hope they can't hear us. My purple You're... nurple, where are you? All right. Okay, he's coming. Lift up the thing. I will. I hope the other one doesn't notice me. Come on. Come on. He doesn't see me. All right, I'm lifting. I'm lifting. Keep move, keep moving. He's There's like, a snake. A snake's gonna bite me. Now. I'm gonna drop it. Oh, oh shit! I, okay, there we go. Watch out! I don't want to kill Whoa, you. Okay. There's a snake. What? Is, why is there a snake? You good? Where I the just... hell did he go? He's right. Hold on, hold on. He's he's lagging for some reason. He's like. Yeah, I see it. I see it too Glitching on the map. Up. I see him teleporting. Oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's teleporting. There's something wrong with him. He's leg switching, man. Yeah, he really is. Oh, what you're teleporting now. I think there's something wrong with the network. Okay, no, he's, he's coming, he's coming. Ah. Alright, keep moving, keep moving. Shit. Wow, he really teleported. Let it go, let it go, release it. Nice. Yeah, he was like freaking out. He was like glitching in the hallway. It was weird. There we go, cool. Alright. Well, Mayo said there's something wrong with Xbox right now, so... I'm hoping it's that and not us. Oh, the other guy is just underneath me. Be, be careful. Shit, I, have, I see him. I have no weapons. Oh, where's that snake? I want to kill the snake. Wait, right, they're just circling. Until you disturb them, they just and aimlessly circle. Where's the snake now? When I'm free, no? <laughs> oh, there it is. Come here, snake. Break these boxes. Ah, I killed State it. spray. Another snake. They drop eggs. I'm gonna be Crocodile Dundee, the snake hunter. Oh, this one didn't drop shit. I'm gonna investigate some more. Hopefully find uh, we find one of the cranks. Okay. Only one guy left, so that's good. I put Checkpoint. in the Checkpoint. next piece. I think I found it. Yep, there we go, blue crank. Awesome, I just need the cool. blue slot. All right, I'm over here at the blue lift. It's on the ground level, so. What about the slot? Is the slot near? Yeah, it's on the it's on the ground. Hold on, I'm just I'm right underneath. Oh, I the... I was able to put in the crate. That's right, I get it too. Nice. Okay. Well, I think he's going your way. He's right under. Ah! You don't see him. Jump down! Jump down! I'm gonna go your way. <laughs> All right, where are you at, hippie? I don't have a visual. Okay, I look at the map. He's I'm I'm taunting the guy. All right, I'm coming your way. He's coming your way too. Where's the slot? Okay, you got it's the crank. It's right in? here, but this one's kind of tricky because it's on this side. You got to lead him around. Okay, I will. I will. Whoever he follows, I'm going back for him because he they they give up after a while. The music you tells me when he actually up yep, there. He is. The music tells me when he's actually chasing, but you got to keep an eye contact with him. Yes, it. gotta lead him down through this hallway probably, I and will. then circle around. Hey, whoever gets to the crank, well, come back, bitch. 
He just ignores you after a while. I'm here. There you go. You can yeah, just lead him down that hallway if you can. He gives and up once you've quickly. <laughs> Is he giving up? <laughs> yeah, he just keeps giving up. And the music goes whoop! And then I... I move... Nope, this is the limit of his chase, I guess. Okay. Where are you? Oh, see, on. he just turns. Alright, we'll try this differently. See, Either one of us, way. just chase anyone. Come on! Look, what... <laughs> this way, come on, come on. Come on, you gotta move, come on. Oh, he, he wants you, okay, at least something. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna bring him around, hippie. So I'm, start I'm lifting it. it, I'm lifting it. It's been lifted. The music just won't let me think. <laughs> so I guess he wanted Jill more than Chris, huh? He did. Imagine throwing egg at Wesker. Oh, you... come on, stop giving up. What's happening? You uh, good? It's, just, it's, just a, it's just a zombie. It's just a zombie. Oh, just a zombie. Okay. Get out of here. Be careful of the spikes. He's going back. He's going back faster than when he's chasing us. I know. What the hell? I think they prefer different colored <laughs> spikes. You ugly bitch. Come here. Oh, he jumped up now. <laughs> I was going to go around. He's, he's running away from me. Oh. Good God. Be careful, though. Where did he go? It gives us a checkpoint before every crank, at least. Oh, God, he just doesn't want to chase. Maybe if I had the oh, courage, I would ugly just bastard. stab him in the eye with the knife. But I don't have the courage. I'm afraid he'll cut Come my head off. Where are you? Oh, he's on the ground. Okay. <laughs> My arms are not getting tired somehow from holding this crank. Come on, you ugly nuisance. Ah, uh, he's gonna come this way now, is he? Yep. I have to let go of the crank, prob probably. He's come, he's here with me, almost. He's with you now? Yeah, well, actually, no, okay. he turned away. So we God, gotta, we gotta he's... guide him this way. I'm letting go of the crank, he's don't go He's so over annoying, him. he doesn't want, he doesn't want to play. They just go in circle, like Outbreak Enemies. Yeah, until, the, the, uh, he's just... Yeah. <laughs> He has no sense of where he's going. It's like chasing Thanatos all over again. <laughs> what the fuck did you go, boy? Is there something <laughs> good <appeared>. there? <laughs> what is it, boy? What did you find there? Where did you go? He's far away. Maybe We use the green one, right? Green, purple, blue. Yeah, we're on the last one. Red. Well, there's. isn't there one more? I, we used three, two. This three. is the last one. There's still, so there's red, violet, blue, and green. So we must be missing one. Maybe he's programmed to be at one or other. There he is, he's chasing me. Well, I, I heard him. His, his, his oh, team. Oh, it's a zombie again. We, we would really suck to get caught. There he is. All right, keep Chase. trying to lure. I'm gonna kill this zombie in this hallway. No, he just He's ignores. Annoying. I don't think that's his section. We gotta find on, the red Jill? one for him, probably. Oh my god. Alright, I'm gonna keep keep him busy here until you come come here. Okay. Apparently Jill has a really hard time stabbing the zombie. Okay, forget it. <laughs> she's stabbing like she's Valerie. She's struggling to do it. Yeah, she's just... It's, Can you get the crank soon? That's a good way soon? to describe it. Alright, I'm here. Where is he? There he is. I'm looking at the map, so I'm gonna lure him away from you. Yeah, go Lift ahead, it. do it. Lift it. Lift it. Oh, never mind. Don't lift it. Sir? Okay, he's still aggro on you. That's good. We want that. Oh, he's coming back. Oh my god. I'm pretty sure we gotta find the, the red one or something. Okay, he's, he's following me, hippie. Get ready to get to the crank. Get into the crank. Oh. Turning the crank, so keep close to him because he's he, he'll he'll lose you easily. Yes, bravo, bravo. Come on, bitch. I see you. I see you. All right, get out of there. Nice one. Yeah. Wow, this was like.
challenging on a completely different level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the AI would not stay with us, but... He just goes I... back to his patrol. Nice. So one more should be left, unless I miss Beating. him. On veteran and higher, there's four blobs, and all four is on map, not one by one like on amateur or normal. Okay. So we had one, then we had two. I'm still think well, there's no fourth one on this one, huh? That is it. Yeah, we're done. Oh, nice. Okay. So the fourth one is actually the fourth crank is only for higher difficulties. Gotcha. Before we leave, is there anything here worth looking at? Like the medallions? Every or... area I could go through, I tried knifing all the boxes, picking up whatever I can. Nice. What about this light? Oh, yeah, I have no gun. That's right. We have no guns. <laughs> yeah, we have no guns. It's so <laughs> weird not having guns in over-the-shoulder REs. Dun, dun, dun. There was also a nice detail. I remembered another thing I wanted to say. There was also a nice detail about Patrick's uh, memoirs saying, you know, how they tease them. You can imagine, you've seen that situation, right? Where a few powerful men gather their, their, let's say, butler in this situation, but whatever is around and they oh, tease yeah. him like in a friendly manner that makes it so much more real than anything we've seen in the main game for sure <clears throat> wow it's it's been three and a half hours like i know <laughs> and an hour and a half of that was uh <laughs> reading files wait there's um look at there's metals here but we don't have guns can you stab them can we let me try to stab it i don't know if i could reach that <laughs> it just looks ridiculous. <laughs> Not with her little Valerie stab now. <laughs> I can't stab it. Well, it's just there to taunt us, I guess. We're gonna get a guns from these special operatives or something. Oh, there we go. M92. There There's one for you, too. Alright, let's shoot the thing. Boing. They all look like uh, I have two first aid sprays already. You want to pick up this one? Oh, nice. Thank you. I should shortcut that. I have an egg. That's the most powerful healing item. Everybody knows. That's right. Healing item made be up. Okay. Where are you? Right behind you. This is almost over, isn't it? It's a short expansion. I think so. Yeah. yeah I think it's almost done. I like, I don't want to leave it for the next time. It's going to be just that. Throw Esker down with the egg. Can you... Wait, but it's... It's not a, it's it's not a rotten egg. Can I even throw it at him? <laughs> <laughs> With the egg in the hand, just put it on the floor. He slips. You think he will dodge it? All right. Hello, sexy. Are we fighting? Oh my! I got an egg, sir. I'm not. Holy shit! Oh, I can. Can I? Oh, can I throw the egg at him? Uh... Throw it at his face. Oh shit! Me. Fuck you, I got an egg, man. Recover. Oh, my... Oh, he almost kicked me. My urethra. Hacha! He dodged the egg. Ah! Alright, better stop getting beaten. Ah! The egg was not oh, a good tactic. My Can we hurt him even? Oh, I'm gonna try the knife again. Man, he bit the shit out of me. Already. What was the point of this battle? I forgot. Just to try to out help. Fuck you. Oh, nice. Ow! Jeez, dude. We should heal <laughs> oh, each other. Come me. on, I'm gonna heal you. I'm gonna equip ah, my. Oh god! No, he's beating my ass. <laughs> Stand near me. Don't run away, no! Oh, I, I got it, it. I got nice, it. I got nice, it. Nice. Ow! Oh, I'm trying just trying to fucking <laughs> knife him. Is you? Are we dancing now, asshole? <laughs> I'm gonna try to help you. Whoa! Get him, get him, get him! Yeah, okay. there you go. I think it's after I dodge him, you have to hit him. Yeah, I didn't see the dodge pro. I don't have a dodge pro. Son of a bitch! I had one at the start, but. Oh god. Hmm. Oh, my face! Oh. A kill. Help um, recover! For the love of fuck, Chris, recover! It hurts! It hurts. <laughs> fuck you. I'm gonna die oh, after nice. this. Oh, nice, good job. You don't have any more health? Nope, I threw the egg and I used the first aid spray to heal us. Jesus! Next punch, I'm dead. Where are you? Oh, he's going for me! Dodge! There we go, finally. Gotcha. Thank you, you, you heal me mid-dodge. 
No, the, sometimes it's just that doesn't go. Come just... on, come on! Oh! 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 Stop it, stop it! Oh! oh. There's no help. Right. <laughs> so oh! Helpless. Every time, same stuff! <laughs> like, I try to knife him, he kicks me! Ow! Oh. Okay, that doesn't <laughs> do it. Obviously, he's, the, the knives don't work. Oh! We're both dying. Oh, God! Oh. Let me get to you, let me get to you, let me get I got you! Hold on! Just like, Hold on dip it. Punch me in the chest! Oh shit! I'm just gonna run. Till he stops doing uh, some uh, shit. <laughs> oh yeah, the minimap! I totally forgot he actually is. His weakness is the minimap. <laughs> uh huh. So if, I, you. if I'm running in circles, he could suck it. Dodge! What? Oh, I fucked up. Oh. I did not expect to dodge there. Oh. I expected more. You know, seven minutes is the limit here too, huh? <laughs> oh, wow, we punched him enough times. We did, we survived. <laughs> What's the point of guns in this section? They do nothing. The knife is useless, you just gotta quick time him. Oh! This is what we saw in the main game, yeah. Her headset is shoved inside her ear, you asshole. Do you have any decency? If he moved like that and did those things, they would have had shattered spines within like seconds. Oh! Is that my blood on the on the thing? Because if it is, that's bad. <laughs> Agent Wesker Matrix 5. Crush! Let's finish this. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna punch you slowly so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I should be going mutation. That's it. That was really short. That was short. Hi, had better accuracy finally. <laughs> and all it took was all, static and, cameras. Hold on. In all fairness, it's probably from all the shots, those mean, meaningless shots I did on Wesker that went. <laughs> <laughs> sending data. Who are you sending it to? Dun, 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 dun. So the machine gun, the weapons, yeah, it's not I expected kind of more usefulness of them. But it was fun, I'm not gonna lie. And we really stretched this very short thing into three and a something hours thanks to all the files and our meticulous searching. <laughs> yeah, GG's gamer, thank you for tuning in, man. You've been here the whole way, I appreciate it. Yeah, everybody on both of our channels, thank you guys for sticking around for this reading Absolutely. session. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so all that's left next Tuesday is Desperate Escape, which is also pretty short. So I'm, I'm guessing we're going to top it off with some uh, Mercenary. I never played Mercenaries in this, so I'm guessing. Are you okay with that? GG's Dragon, play? thank you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Amazing. Very well, that, cool. was, that was an unexpectedly good session. Like the entire RE5, as much as pain I got playing RE4 there for a whole month, it would never end. I would never escape that castle. This just went by so fast. It really did. Yeah, that was pretty quick. Oh, that was fun. I really enjoyed that. It was nice to have the little throwback with uh, something I didn't even know, which was the, you know, the fixed cameras. That was a really cool touch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good thing. Good thing the tweet I prepared for the st before the stream, you know, as an announcement, I never sent it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Well, who cares? Here we are. We're still here. Yep. Like I said, thank you guys for watching over here and the Mutations channel. It's just, we appreciate you guys. What can I say? We really do. Thank you so much. And uh, just uh, be prepared for more. <laughs> There's a lot more to come. RE6, I can't wait. Yeah, It's, it's known by now. Right. I love that one.
Who we gonna who we gonna who we gonna raid? Ghostbusters. Or can raid Ghostbusters. Let's see if we can make a good segue. Not really. Fuck it, I'll raid Swayze. Thank we're doing, we're doing you! Support ping pong here. Right on. Diablo 4. Why not? This looks like Why Diablo not? 4, kinda. <laughs> <laughs> All set here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Time for me to close my eyes for a few hours. <laughs> Invitation, thanks again, man. Everybody. My pleasure. Until next time. Bye. See you guys later. Bye-bye.